ESPN. Nice. All right, we had a little bit of a studio meltdown about a minute and a half before we went live. I guess all the sound from this particular studio was not getting sent out to the fine folks at ESPN or even to our YouTube. We want to let you know, thanks for hanging around. Hey, hey, we have a huge Trenches Wednesday today. Obviously, J.J. Watt will be joining us, which he does every single Wednesday. But also the commissioner of the NBA, Adam Silver, will be joining us on this particular program in about 22 minutes. I'm happy you're going to be able to hear it because we're going to do it anyways. But <laughs> we're going to get a chance to chat with him about everything popping off around the NBA Cup. This is Adam Silver's baby. Yep. This middle of the season tournament that has made things matter. You know, we'll change the quarter a little bit. We'll put $500,000 on a line for everybody on the roster. And at the beginning, everybody laughed and so it's just a mega bowl. What is this? The Flint Tropics trying to get into eighth place to continue to exist. What a fugaze. What a joke. Now you hear all the players that are involved are yeah. like, yeah, if there's a little bit of added energy. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of heightened thing. My family, my friends, fans of the game were getting a little bit more excited. And also, half a million dollars for the boys at the end of the uh, bench is good for everybody. So it's being heralded a huge success. We'll talk to Adam Silver. We also have some other questions about the NBA. Oh, yeah. yes, we oh, do. Yeah. Now, listen, are we necessarily the people that you go to for NBA news? But today... We are. Yeah, that's right. right. Today, we got an opportunity to talk to another commissioner. Yeah. Damn right. We talked to the NHL commissioner. Bettman mm -hmm. came by. It was great to chat with him. Absolutely. Great, Asked all the questions that we saw people were potentially upset about and got some good answers yeah. out there. Even some of the hard ones, you know? The MLS commissioner wants to come on the program. Yeah. The NBA commissioner is coming mm. on the program. Hey, Raj! Hmm. Don't be scared, Raj. What's the deal? Quit ducking. I just wear a tank top. Hmm. We're just a bunch of doofuses. Mm -hmm. Yes. Don't be scared, Roger. You're giving interviews to everybody. You're doing a whole song and dance everywhere you go. Yeah. Adam Silver's not scared to come no, dance not. in not the Thunderdome, is he? Uh -uh. Not at all. Not one bit. No. But Roger is, isn't it? That's what yeah, it feels like. It does. He doesn't, he doesn't want to dance. I don't know why he, want, he doesn't want to dance. We see him dancing all the time. Why not dance here? And AQ, I know you just gave an incredible answer, and uh, that was a nice rehearsal, but a lot of people didn't hear it. Roger Goodell is looking to ban something else from the NFL is what we're all thinking. And we learned it from the New Heights podcast with Jason and Travis Kelsey, where basically Roger Goodell is looking to ban the tush push. Roger Goodell is looking to ban the brotherly shove. Now, this has been something he did. He added the fair catches in for kickoffs this year because yep. that was basically his instituted yep. role. Jeez. We assume if Roger Goodell gets behind something, it's going to happen. So the brotherly shove, we need to enjoy it for the rest of this year because I think it's going to be gone, AQ. It seems Roger wants to keep banning a lot of the things that make football good. Doesn't Whoa! it seem that way? Whoa! Doesn't it? Whoa! I don't understand why we keep wow. trying to mess with this game that has been the same way for hundreds of years. Maybe 100 years, whatever it is. But it's the league's over 100. Yeah, so it's over 100, right? Long time. Yeah. Jesus ran slants. Yeah, he did. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. You should have seen him. Dude, he, Holy hell. There was this Unreal. big puddle on the field mm -hmm. that the defense could had to go up and around. Yep. Yeah, the rain He game. just boom and then Caught right it. across the top of that puddle. See, right. Caught it, got up the rail. And Unbelievable. Skating. It was like he was on ice almost. Mm -hmm. They did his cross. And then there person. was uh what was old buddy's name that hung out with him a bunch? Moses. John the Baptist, Judas, maybe? John, sure. Judas, bad guy. Judas yeah. was a mean cuss. Judas that was a bad guy. out with him a bunch. He was, well, he he was, he was Ray Lewis John before, the Baptist Ray. was his guy. Man. So John the Baptist has that two accuracy. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. So, you know, you can run those slants on water like Jesus did, uh -huh. and John the Baptist is going to make the most of it. Now... Not everybody thinks you need John the Baptist to be throwing the ball at you Jesus do, Christ. Well, you should. When you got Jesus Christ running across the top of water, running around quicker and more explosive than anybody yeah. else, anybody can throw a ball. Here's Micah Parsons from Micah <laughs> Parsons' <laughs> podcast speaking about the job of quarterback whenever you have great weapons. We would like it to be known we are massive fans of Micah Parsons. And Micah knows in here he's talking completely out of pocket. <laughs> yeah. Here's him from his podcast. You look at... You know what Purdy's doing? Purdy is playing great football for a second year QB, regardless. I think, but the thing about it, I think his playmakers are just making better plays. Um, if you see Debo's runs, those are quick passes. Yes, he's getting it to him. But honestly, sometimes, truth <laughs> be about it or not, and I am talking crazy no. <laughs> right now. Yeah. You are. I am talking crazy right now. Yeah, we agree. And I'm and I'm talking very crazy. Yep. Noted. I truly believe I could be Tyreek Hill's quarterback. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Micah. Yeah. I could throw it up to Tyreek Hill. Yeah. yeah I could throw a screen pass to Debo. Yeah. Like I and this might be the crazy mad inside of me. No. But these players are just that good. Christian McCaffrey's just that good. 
Okay. If I get to get the ball out to Christian McCaffrey in space, he's going to make someone miss. He's yeah. going to make a play happen for him. Sure. Just throwing right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you kiddled? They're a great playmaker. If you watch that game, sure. they were able to make people's miss mm-hmm. and obviously make big plays off of it. Small pass, precise yeah. passes oh. um, kept in front of them. You look at this, this, the pass chart, right? Those, those aren't. Hard passes, they're good passes. <laughs> okay. okay, but those players are really freaking hard. good at what they do. Yeah, some of the best. Yeah. Uh, some of the, they these are. players <laughs> top five uh, at their at their uh, position. That's right. Um, okay, but they, they're just super good. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 that's just what they do. Okay, all right, oh. Michael, we appreciate <laughs> all you, right, Michael. Michael. And I, Michael is much better at football than I'll ever be. Me too. So I will take whatever he says. Me too. As a matter of fact, until I have a differing opinion that just think like, yep, that's not right what you just said. (laughs) Yeah. Because his own teammate, Trey Lance, couldn't do it. Yeah. Right. I mean, that guy's on the Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Could not do it. Why do you think there continues to be this narrative? Mike is just another one on the list. Mm -hmm. You know, we all know Dan Orlovsky. Yeah. Yeah. And we know there's many other people that are just like, he was Mr. Irrelevant. So the scouts coming out didn't think he was good. It can't be good. Why does this continue (laughs) to be? the narrative about Brock Purdy. I get it that, yeah, throwing a screen to Christian McCaffrey is is easy to do. Sure. Now, granted, you have to hit him yep. in, stri- in yeah. mm-hmm. on a slant to Debo. You got to hit it. You got to put him right there. And I bet Micah, with how athletic he is, mm-hmm. absolutely can put a ball in a bucket. Well, yeah. I believe he. And I know Micah, with how uh, much he knows football, he can dissect the defense quickly and know exactly sure. where he's supposed to go mm-hmm. and put the ball into a one foot by one foot keyhole, yeah. Boom. keyhole spot. Yeah. On perfect timing. I think Micah can do that. That's how athletic I think Mike is. Sure. But Mike has now added to another list of people that just think yeah. what Brock Purdy's doing isn't impressive. Why is this the case, you think, D-Buck? I mean, the play, because of the, how talented the guys are around him, and that's that's just a credit to John Lynch and the team he put together. They are surrounded by dogs, but all those things you mentioned, you mentioned the guys who've been in there. Sam Darn, I mean, Brock Purdy was barely out of concussion protocol. Hey, nah, you're playing. It's, yeah. you, you get, get your ass out there. So, I mean, you got it's so much that goes into quarterback play from game planning, from uh, you know not riding the ebbs and flows, from making those on target passes, reading coverages. And look, Michael's Michael's obviously a phenomenal athlete. If it was one player that I had to say, hey, we got a team, we got to pick one guy that has to play all 11 spots, Michael will probably be the first overall pick in that type of draft. But this is what Michael does. And I love that he has a podcast and a platform. He did it with Jalen Hurts last year, talked about the talent, the offensive line, and the yeah. skills group right, around that, him. I came back. He, obviously talking about Tua, and actually I could throw the ball to Tyreek Hill. Yeah. This, this, is, this is right up. Yeah, I Michael can throw it up Tyreek Hill. He might can. Anybody can throw it. I mean, look how fast he is. Come on, you wide open. Throw the ball as far as you can. Yeah. I love it out of Micah. And once again, Micah has earned the right to say whatever. Now, sure. there's people that aren't Micah that are saying similar things, though, that have only worn suits their entire life sure. and gone to school to be in the media. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, they're allowed to say whatever they want because they are you know, graduates of a brainwashing media school. Sure. That's so, right. like, that is something that some people start talking. But Micah certainly feeds those people mm-hmm. even more whenever he says things like this. It's his opinions. It's his thoughts. Yeah. But I think what we all say is, like, hey, those peoples is different. Tua, yeah. different. Yeah. Purdy, different. Yeah, right. there's, a, there's levels to this. And he wants his quarterback to win MVP, too. I Which, yeah. That, who's playing great. Who's surrounded by some pretty good easy. Uh, talent as yeah. well? That was an easy throw. That's an easy throw. They did the leave that. Thirty-five. Out there. Boom. That's an easy, easy throw. throw. That's out? easy, easy did, throw. Was, now, did he put it right in? Yeah, he did. That but that's song? easy. It's easy. Anybody, like, Jawan Jennings too. Everybody knows who that. Yeah. Is. Oh yeah, yeah of course. Most ab- guys absolute. Well. And I don't want to turn this into a "We'll go to bat for Brock Purdy" show. We will though. But it's starting to become that. Yeah. Because this dude is. Phenomenal at football. His swagger and moxie is awesome as well. And he doesn't really ever make it about himself ever. He's like handled it all Mm -hmm. perfectly while playing lights out football since day one getting the opportunity. Do you think that's why though? Like we see how he dresses pregame. He's wearing the stuff from Coles or Old Navy. Like he's never talking shit. He's always praising everyone else. It's never, you know, I anything about him he could always play better he could always do better like if he was one of those guys who post game was a little fiery and was like talking shit and kind of saying like yeah I'm very very good no one wants to talk about it no one wants to admit it but if he came out and said that maybe people would change their tune a little bit I don't know it was that three game stretch too when Debo when Debo was out sure that was was tough then you lose three games but you look at the you look at the stats you look at the film 
Brock still played well. Well, and Cleveland defense, too. Also, yeah. Cleveland defense, defense, you know, obviously not a walk in the park. Brock still played well, but you have that three game skill when you do lose a guy. Like I said, they are phenomenal players, but once again, you have to have a guy that's under center that can pull the trigger. Was this a shot at CeeDee Lamb as well and stuff like that? He didn't say he could play a quarterback for his own team. And you know what? All this slander about Brock Purdy bums me out. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It, it, <laughs> oh. Yeah, it, it bums me out. You're bummed out? Because he's a, he's a really good quarterback, and just because he was Mr. Irrelevant and all that, it, it bums me out. Okay, the way you say that, almost as good as Ed Bechtold <laughs> in Pittsburgh, who may, uh, missed a triple overtime <laughs> hockey game because the power went out in Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. and he was interviewed. And here's what he had to say to Tom at WTAE. So I hear I missed three overtimes. But we did win. That's all that matters to me. <laughs> you bummed out you didn't get to see it? I'm bummed out. I'm bummed out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that the biggest, uh, the biggest impact from the storm uh, overnight? Other than the for as far as I'm concerned, yeah. <laughs> Not even a power. Just the hockey game. The power could have went yeah. out after the mm-hmm. hockey game, but... Missing that three overtimes upset me a little bit. Ed Bechtel was bummed out. Bummed out. Bummed out I don't know if he's as bummed out as you are about the Brock Purdy slander, <laughs> but Mr. Bechtel, we appreciate the hell out of yeah. you for uh, understanding. Uh, yeah, I'm a disabled Vietnam vet. We lose power. Probably affects my life. <laughs> Big time. In a lot of different ways. <laughs> yeah. But you're telling me the Pens won triple overtime. We won that game. Like, we were in a little bit of a skid. Yeah. We oh. needed that win. Oh, no. Yeah, it does bum me out. I didn't get to see I apologize. I apologize for having to do that that early in the show, but it, you know, I am I am bummed out about it because you know, I don't like when guys don't get credit when they deserve credit, and that you know, and a player doing that to another player in the league—that's bullshit. Okay, <laughs> uh, thank you so okay, much for taking stand, Tone. Uh, the thing about it is, Mike is allowed to say whatever the hell he wants. Sure. Yeah, Mike he has earned the ability to say whatever he wants, but it does feel like a lot of people say the same thing about Brock. Yeah, and it's like, how long does that last for? How long does, Ooh. you know what I mean? Because we're in the second year. We're still in the second year right now. And you look at the ranks, it's, yeah, he's great at everything. He's pretty yeah. good, yeah. yeah and mm-hmm. he's, his brain is the thing that, you know, I guess you could just judge his arm and how fast he is and the size in which he stands and operates and how he walks and the clothes he wears. Yes. Yeah. But what you can't judge, which has been the determining factor for greatness forever, in sport is the old right here. This dude's a killer. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And uh, that is the something that they got wrong in the entire draft process. I just wonder how long it'll be until everybody kind of recognizes long and time. appreciates that. Yeah. I think a long time. Like, he could win probably two, three Super Bowls. If he's with these guys, it's still going. Because as crazy as it sounds, it's a lot of people who really didn't give Brady that that real, like, okay. Oh, yeah. that's Until he left in Tampa and won one. Because, oh, he's a system guy. Wow. Vinatieri saved him. Belichick. I mean, if you really know football, he was a goat a long time ago. But a lot of people, because of being drafted 199, not being a Peyton Manning or that guy from, you know, who was the chosen one from the jump. If Brock was drafted three overall, this wouldn't be a conversation. MVP conversation. Yeah, it wouldn't yeah. be a conversation. For, but, uh, forever yeah. right now. Yeah, if, I think it's just more so the fact that it doesn't look the way the early greats, at least in the past five years, has looked. Like when Mahomes came in, he's doing, he's throwing sure. in a mile, he's running around, he's sprinting back 15 yards and k- turning around, making a touchdown pass. Lamar, he Is comes he all right? in. Patrick Mahomes, all right? uh, Chiefs, all right, you think? Yeah, they're fine. I mean, okay. they're fine. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Sure. And, 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 yeah, it just it, because he's just standing in the pocket and making unbelievable throws and going 19 to 20 in games and scoring touchdowns and not making mistakes, people just think, oh, okay, well, he's got a great O line and good weapons. He can do that versus, you know, a Mahomes, a Lamar. I mean, you could even throw Dak in there. Dak got killed early, but now he's doing well. And because of the fact that Purdy's just kind of like the old school prototypical quarterback, you could say, stand in the pocket, make the throws, hand the ball off, manage the game, which yep. people bash, even though. That's what you need every single damn quarterback, That's quarterback to do. Is, yeah. yeah, that is why I think that he'll just never have that. And I, even if they, you know, the books gave him love though. They did. Yeah, they did. Books yeah. gave him love. Yeah. He's the favorite yeah. for the MVP. But chatter isn't about that ever about him. The one thing that people don't, um, they, they can't ever put their thumbprint on is these scouts. You're supposed to look a certain way, right? Whenever yep. you come into the league, you're supposed sure. to be six three, six four. You're supposed to have this arm strength. You're supposed to be able to do all this stuff. You're supposed to have longer arms. You're supposed to have longer arms. I was sure. a product of this. I understand the way this works. So whenever somebody exceeds those expectations or has maybe the mental capacity or maybe the drive or the will that maybe exceeds what the, the people in the front office say, 
you're going to constantly question it because now you're making them look bad a little bit, right? Yep. And so now when he starts to exceed They're that, trying to prove that everything we thought yeah. was right. Exactly. Got and, it. And, and it's over and over and over again, but it's like they can't put into the fact that he leads the team, he runs the huddle, he's running a can system, he has to read the safety, he's putting them, you know, if the safety's down here, we go can, we send it the other way. They put the dummy cans, they got all the different lingo, and he's putting everybody in the right place. Oh, and by the way, the ball's coming out on time. And it's exactly the way the offense is supposed to be in a bucket, right? Yeah, exactly. his, I think his accuracy, too, is just another. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Next level. It's just because he's throwing around people, too. So mm -hmm. that's a whole other thing. Arm angle. We watched, uh, we watched the Iowa Hawkeyes play. That's sure. right. Boy, that was horrendous. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, I mean, we're talking maybe worst football game I've ever watched. Well, we'll just wait for tomorrow. Night. That Iowa Hawkeyes. Well, you're right. I did well, enjoy was, watching their defense, though. Yeah, it was fun to watch defense. Torrey Taylor hit a couple uh, yep. balls that went big, uh, yeah. a long way. Mm -hmm. uh, Michigan, obviously, it was fun to watch Blake Corum's doing their thing. But, like, <laughs> you, that Deacon Hill guy? Yeah, Deacon. Yeah. Yep. Somebody comes running in his face like this. He isn't even thinking about getting that ball around that person. No. Right, right, or right. trying to move. He threw it right at a face blocked a couple passes oh, yeah. from somebody on defensive side. Ooh. And with Brock Purdy being seemingly undersized is what they would say, yep. he always finds, like, a way to get the ball out. He just has, like, this natural instinct, too, in mm -hmm. all these situations that make him seemingly a great quarterback. We're big fans. Hey, Brock, I'm sure you've – I don't know if you've heard it, actually, all the way out there in the West Coast. We're big fans, though, pal. Yeah. We're big, big He's fans. There was Go actually – I don't know if it was on the broadcast or not, but they – I guess during that little stretch, uh, Kyle came up to her, I believe his coach Shannon who came up to him and was like hey what everyone's saying like that's a bunch of bullshit and Brock's like what is everyone just saying I love that <laughs> yeah keep it locked out of your mind mm -hmm. who cares keep it completely out of there that's how it should be uh AQ let's pivot to something that you also know a lot about and I didn't know that that was going to turn into a draft scouting evaluation yeah. convo about AQ Shipley sorry they say his arm's way too short too small got way too big yep. yeah well, well, not better at the time rounds. It was. yep that's what they were well, saying how many years legs well, too short right 12, 12. Not bitter at all. You couldn't tell yeah. by that. Four times the average. It's only been a, it's only been a baker's dozen years since that. <laughs> yeah. Still <laughs> thinking about it every morning. Mm -hmm. These guys don't know ball. These guys. <laughs> what you do know though is about uh, sports hernia injuries, which are now being labeled core muscle surgery. Okay, so it came uh -huh. out. Christian Kirk uh, will miss eight weeks with a core muscle surgery. Now that happened very first play, I think, <laughs> yep. as first reception, and it didn't look like much. And then he goes down in a heap, and he kind of grabs to his groin area. Now you didn't know if it was groin. We didn't know if it was something maybe with his baby maker. Yeah, sure. Right. We had no yeah. idea what potentially took place. Now we have learned that is the core muscle injury. You had two of those, mm -hmm. one on your right side and your left side. Mm -hmm. What is this? Is this sport? Sports hernia, and what is the whole process of this entire thing that you had to go through two times? Already? So, so the old term is sports hernia. Yes, they have since changed the name to core muscle surgery. I guess it sounds better. I don't know. But Dr. Bill Myers out of Philadelphia is the guy who does it all. He does every single one of them. And you got your pubic bone like this, and you, got a, you have an ab muscle that wraps around from here. You got another muscle from the leg that kind of wraps around here. Ooh. And if either one of those tear, you can tear from either side. It's considered a core muscle or sports hernia, right? And so what happens is you go up there, you get – I mean, the guy, you want to talk about a factory? This guy, you go in on a Monday, you get your MRI, does the surgery on Tuesday, the next crew comes in on Wednesday, you get your MRI, he does another surgery. So he does surgery two days a week, you get the MRIs the day before, what? and it's boom, 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 boom. It's all day long. This guy is the guy. He's the guy. He's the only guy. I mean, he has a monopoly on the market. It's in Philadelphia. And downstairs is the MRI, downstairs is the surgery. Above is the rehab. You start your rehab process there. Immediately after surgery, within hours to let's say two three hours you're already up walk and it's a pretty aggressive protocol and it is mm. six weeks to the day return to play okay oh wow. Wow. Okay. misinformation huh. six weeks return to play great. after the surgery it's great news for the jags because they're obviously holding on hope that they're going to be around still although we are going into week 14 of the nfl season mm -hmm. there's a chance the jags still going around especially with the parity oh, yeah. of the afc and with how many backup quarterbacks are playing mm -hmm. do we learn anything about trevor lawrence uh, high ankle sprain ian rapaport put out a tweet like maybe he plays this week yeah. yeah and then he had to quote tweet that and say basically would be a long shot yeah right no no shit mm -hmm. right it's a high ankle sprain we assume that's going to be a few weeks but the jack's still very much in the middle of this entire thing yeah i mean trevor lawrence obviously obviously a Huge big piece, piece of this yeah we because i i don't think most people outside of probably tie expect much out of cj 
Beathard um, mm-hmm. at that quarterback position. But you what get you Trevor mean? Lawrence back in there. They're sitting at eight and four right now, so they have a little wiggle room where they can maybe even lose a couple. Um, obviously, the AFC South is tight right now. But um, Trevor Lawrence getting there, let's say two weeks, then get back in there. Uh, Kirk will be out, but you still got Ridley. You still got Ingram, who's been having a great year. ETN's back yeah. healthy. Um, so they definitely have weapons where you can spread the wealth around for sure. Doug Peterson, also an absolute dog. Yep. Uh, and calling plays and strategizing. Last year, I don't know if you saw it, but there was a kind of a similar hit that Trevor Lawrence took where it looked like his ankle was going to explode again. And then he, I think he played two weeks after it. It was a very similar thing. Sprained ankle the, the whole nine. And that Parker Washington kid also kind of yeah. came on a little bit on Monday night. He could be a dog at wide receiver reform now i know this is never going to happen because they're nfl quarterbacks and their competitors and and this will absolutely never happen so for someone to suggest that a starting quarterback would sit a few weeks just to get healthy is never ever 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 going to happen uh but trevor lawrence facing the browns and what are you referring to something that sounds like sounds like that was something you were referring there's a maybe voice drop in there in the middle no, I, I thought I saw someone on the internet suggest that Jalen Hurts uh, not start the next few weeks or something like that. But I, I well, that's not that? that, that's Who not because that? Jalen Hurts is hurt either. Who said it? That is strictly talent. Who said? No, no, it was because he's hurt. Uh, David Carr, I believe, said that. Oh, okay, all right. I knew it was something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did oh, not yeah. know the background there. Sure. Yeah. Heard in the voice. You were looking when down it, when yeah. he started talking. Bingo. Yeah, yeah. I was actually seeing, <laughs> yeah. you know, looking some stuff up real quick. And as I heard it in there, I'm like, ooh, Tone's talking shit on somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Something's going on. That is, that is what that was there. Okay, David Carr uh, said that Jalen Hurts maybe – uh, sit for a couple weeks. Yeah. If he, he said Sirianni should potentially go up to him and say, "Hey, maybe Mariota starts the next few weeks while you get healthy and, and stuff like that." Okay, which- so that would be load management. Joining yeah. us now is a man who's had to have enough load management conversation. I think he's probably <laughs> done with it for the rest of his life. An absolute stallion of a human who has created a tournament that has captivated not just the basketball world but the sports world in the middle of the season in which he is the commissioner of the fifth commissioner of the association. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Silver. Thank you. Thank you for that intro. Hey, I want to let you know this, Adam. Commish, Adam, Mr. Silver, what should I call you? Adam, please. Adam, Pat. Okay. Adam, there is never a time in my life where I thought this would be happening right here, (laughs) me and you. So, like, thank you for doing this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hey, uh, long-time listener, first-time caller. Okay. I like to hear that. Now, you need to remain a smart human being, so let's listen to our show in short bursts uh, so we don't ruin you. Uh, Let's dive in here, though, Adam. So, the in-season tournament, the NBA Cup, Whenever it was first announced, I think a lot of people thought it was a sham, a fugaz, what is this? Last night, obviously, with the way that game ends, there's a big conversation. But then Kevin Durant was interviewed after the game. Here's what he had to say about the NBA Cup and the in-season tournament. I wasn't a huge fan of the in-season tournament when they were announcing it and coming up with the idea. But um, today, leading up to the game, like it felt like a playoff game. Um, hey, can you stop? It felt like a playoff game from just friends, family, fans, just so excited about it. Just the courts was different. Just the vibe around. Like last night was a great night for the game with those two two incredible games that were on. You know, so it felt like a playoff game coming into it and like waking up this morning. So. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan, but now I'm, a, I'm excited about the end season tournament. I'm pissed that we're not going to Vegas to try to win this thing, but um, it definitely made me a fan. Okay, so obviously that is a huge motion of support from one of your biggest stars in the league. Are you taking a victory lap with this thing? Because we saw the reaction whenever it was announced and you stood firm behind it. And how do you think it's panned out? And when are you giving yourself a parade for this thing, Adam? Well, no victory lap yet. Let's wait till we get through Saturday. So we got, okay. of course, you know, Thursday semifinals and and the ultimate cup game. And thanks for wearing that jersey hey. on Saturday. Thank you. Uh, you know, one thing that we knew from the beginning it was so interesting to hear Kevin there, because when people ask me, how would you know if it was successful? Of course, you can look at attendance, you can look at ratings and social media chatter. And even the fact that we're talking about it now are, are all signs of success. But I said, It'll be measured in terms of the enthusiasm of the players. Um, Will they take it seriously? Will they compete? Will they play, you know, as opposed to load management in these regular season games? Um, Will they care about winning? Will they care about going to Vegas? Will they care about the prize money? And it seems like Katie just checked off the whole list right there in terms of things, including 
the colorful courts that I know are a little bit controversial. <laughs> but so I think from that standpoint, a great start. A and in terms of our, our, our you know, belief that this could be successful, again, you think 30% of the players in this league roughly are born outside the United States. Many of them grew up soccer fans around the world or competing in international basketball tournaments um, where there were often cups along the way. I mean, I had a kind of a conversation the, the other day with J.J. Redick, of course, a colleague on ESPN now. And even he and I were talking about when he was at Duke that they, they didn't call them cup competitions, but there was holiday tournaments and, you know, the Alaska shootout and things like that. And so, and, and LeBron, as LeBron said, the, I think it was last night too, after the game, that these are the most competitive people in the world. And if you give them a format to compete and their prizes and, and, and you know, it's, it's structured in a way where they can do things like get to Vegas and get additional prize money, they're going to be all in. So I, I'm thrilled to see that. You know, I'll only say in terms of the victory lap, you know, a lot of learning from the first time around lot that people want to talk about. I'm sure we can improve on it, but we're off to a great start. Yeah, you talk about those tournaments. I think Dickie V Classic is happening right yeah. now at Madison Square Garden, amongst mm -hmm. other things. Anytime you put a little bit more, you know, elevated pressure on an event, normally the athletes, as in incredibly competitive humans, will show up for it. Your NBA guys have. What are you learning about this one for next year? And is this going to be an every year thing now? That's obviously the plan? Yeah, the, the plan would be for it to be an, an, an every year thing. I, I think what we're learning, you know, there's been some controversy around the point differentials, using those to, 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 to decide seeding. Again, that was another concept we took from international competition, not just international soccer, but in FIBA tournaments, even in the Olympics, they've always used differentials um, during that initial, you know, group stage before you get to the knockout round to decide ties. So that was something we did here. You know, and I and I I heard some of the commentary, you know, from coaches, some of the players about whether we think it's the right message where teams are are increasing leads, you know, beyond the point that's necessary to win, but where those differentials become important for seeding. Again, it may be that once everybody has a full understanding that this is part of international competition, they'll be okay with it. But I also want to react. I guess I, I understand it's culturally different here. And if people think that goes against the, the notions of sportsmanship that we grew up with. Maybe we got to make some changes there. I think on the courts, I like the colorful courts. I'm a big fan of those. You know, they, because it was sort of a last minute initiative, they were somewhat cookie cutter. I mean, teams had okay. color options, but right. they kind of, there's a similar look to all of them. I think next year we could have a lot of fun with teams saying, here are the parameters, but you know, do the Louis Vuitton court, or whatever, you know, do, 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 some, do some fun stuff, you know, go out there, have partnerships, you know, do, you know, we could have fan contests around the courts and stuff like that. Obviously, there was some initial issues of players where there, there was a concern of whether the way they were painted, there was some slipperiness and stuff. Obviously, we've got to make sure they're safe. But I think it's it's sort of a license. You know, we've had the play in now, you know, now with the in-season tournament just to do more. You know, honestly, you know, look what you've done with your show and, and chart, you know, new formats, new approaches, new ways of doing things. That's it's not that different for us. You know, you, we're all competing well, for an audience. We're competing for interest. And we learn from each other. Well, you all have brains. We do not. So <laughs> yeah. everything you do will be calculated. And I'll, on the courts thing, whenever you're walking through, let's say, an airport or a restaurant or something, mm -hmm. and you see it on a screen, you're naturally just going to stop and kind of look. So I, I think... As a stooge, as like a, a kind of zoom, I liked it. I enjoyed it. Could you imagine a skims court next year? <laughs> Adam Silver in his tights yeah. from one side of the court yeah. to the other. Yeah, Just a whole side of that thing in your skims. Huh? That would be great. That's uh, you, you need a skims deal. No, no, no. <laughs> they, have, they, it, 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 they got tank tops. They got, they got a whole wardrobe <laughs> for you. But you know what's interesting? Hearing Katie on the courts, too. Like one thing I've learned over a lot of years at the NBA, that players are not that different than fans in terms of, and you know, for, as, as they an NFL once player, fans, like once they, fans. they mm -hmm. at, but also as a guy, like you're responding, even when you're in the league, like to what your friends are saying, to what the media is saying. And, and I think the notion, I hadn't thought of this, that even players would get up because they see that the court's different, that, it, that, you know, we were thinking in terms of the visual medium to your point somebody walking through an airport in a bar or in flipping their channels and seeing something different is going on tonight because the court looks very different i hadn't thought that much about the fact that a player taking the floor would be saying yeah something's very different tonight it's not a regular season game the court looks completely different and 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 i always forget sometimes all those 
trappings are as meaningful for the players and the coaches and the community as much as the fans who are watching it. Yeah, it just feels different. You know, anytime something feels different, it's like, because 82 games, a lot of games. And obviously, you chatted about load management. We were talking about that. I think the 65 rule feels like that's a good yeah, hey, yeah. Feels like you figured Thanks. it out. Feels like you threaded the, the needle in that entire thing. I want to talk, though, about the international conversation, because you said 30% of your league is international. And obviously, right. superstars now. Joker, MVP. Yeah. Yep. Luca, right. Obviously, Giannis. Is Giannis, the guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's just so many of why do you think your game and your league is so international, so diverse whenever it comes to, you know, players from other countries coming in? And do you see that growing? Or are we at the peak right now where it's at? Oh, it's, I mean, and add to the list the first pick from last year's draft, Victor Wembanyama, oh. of course, in San Antonio, yeah. now the French player. Right. So, hey, he's cheating, so, isn't he? Isn't he kind of cheating, <laughs> that guy? He, you know, yeah. he's... So, you know, <laughs> I think a lot of credit, I, I would say, goes back to, frankly, James Naismith. When he created this game, mm -hmm. he was a missionary at, a, you know, he was a Christian missionary, but he began this game famously at a YMCA in Springfield, Massachusetts. He then, the YMCA organization, then took this game globally in the 1890s to China, to, to, to throughout Europe, you know, to Australia, to everywhere in the world, because they saw it as an opportunity for young men, that's it was focused on men at the time, to stay active. It, it's, it's interesting, the values, put aside the religious aspect of it, are not all th that different than the values we preach today in terms of the importance of physical activity, of team play, of respect. I mean, if, if, if you go back to the, to the origins of the game, but so anyway, like by virtue of those people who began, who developed the game and saw an opportunity to take this game globally, it then became an Olympic sport in the 1930s, and we're a huge beneficiary of that. And even now, if you look at those international players that we talked about, those star players in the league, most of them came up through state-sponsored sports systems, which is, you know, I was reminding people outside of the United States, most governments have a cabinet-level officer, sort of a, a minister of sport, you know, a secretary of sport that oversees sport in that country and oversees development. I mean, for example, if you think about a, a relatively small market like Australia, which has about 25 million people, uh, last I looked, I think they have 13 NBA players, oh. you know, from, from a market that's small. And, it, and it's not DNA. It's because of the systems they have, you know, in place to help, you know, teach physical education, to identify top stars, boys and girls, develop them along top-notch competition. You see in Serbia, Slovenia, you see these small countries with these great sport traditions. So I think as, as we continue to be engaged in international competition, our, our World Cup of basketball, everybody talks about the World Cup of, uh, of soccer, football internationally, but the World Cup of basketball is beginning to get, get more attention. In you know, we have a Paris Olympics coming up and the Summer Olympics. Basketball has been a huge deal. Then you're going to have L.A. You know, in 28 coming after 24 in Paris, you know, will be a big deal there. So I think as, as more young people get connected to this game, and that's where social media and digital media has been incredible, we're, we're expanding. You know, we, we, we added a new league in Africa in the middle of pandemic. We got, listen to this statistic, 10% of current players in the NBA were either born in Africa or one of their parents was born in Africa. So they're, you know, a continent with over a billion people, 55 countries, enormous amount of basketball being played there. We're the number one sport in China right now in terms of participation and interest. Um, we're, we're, we're making leaps and bounds in India, in these huge population centers in the world. I think part of it is because it's an, it's, it's an incredibly difficult game to master, but it's a relatively easy game to play. I always say like growing up in the suburbs of New York, it's why they use basketball in gym class. <laughs> you know, it's like, mm -hmm. here you go. You run that way or that way. You got to dribble it. You can't carry it. And, and you can grasp the concept and you can keep kids physically engaged. So I think that number, as you look at the pool of players boys and girls who are playing this game around the world, that number getting close to 30% of international players in the NBA, uh, you know, similarly in the WNBA, those numbers are only going to grow. Okay. I think I saw some videos of some monks. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some step back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't even think they were talking to each other. No, nope. They were letting their game speak. Yeah. And I saw a little hezzy. Oh, oh. I mean, it was... <laughs> It was a pro oh, Hey, yeah. some of those monks were a problem. Yeah. <laughs> some of those monks were a problem that I was watching. Uh, do you feel an obligation to be a part of, like, international relations? I mean, you said one country that I think we're not necessarily, like, the tightest with right now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Do yeah. You, are no. you a part of that? Do you get pulled into those types of conversations? 
I, I get pulled in, though, not always in a positive way <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in terms yeah. of what we're doing. I, I, I will say, you know, I, I was reading a lot of those long obituaries around you know, Henry Kissinger's death, you know, at 100. And, I, you know, I were he was sort of an exemplar of one of the great global diplomats. And I want to say I understand. I mean, this is going to be far afield, maybe your question. I, of course, believe we have to have a strong military. I'm a big believer in it at the same time you know, call it soft power or call it diplomacy. I think through sport, yes. through culture, through arts, it brings connectivity uh, together with, you know, people of, of diverse cultures and backgrounds. Basketball is one of those sports. I mean, you know, again, you know, as, as an athlete, even I think what connects you to people, you know, by virtue of your career in the NFL, talking about sports, but then using that as a platform, just as we are now to talk about other things. So, you know, I'm not, I, I, you know, I'm a sports executive. I'm not a diplomat, but I think the things that we do around the world by participating in these national games, Olympic games, by taking our games globally, by bringing international players to the United States, by showcasing the very best, by people seeing our values of this game around the world, these principles, this I call it like the rule of law. It's interesting that the World Cup of soccer and football was in Qatar, you know, 200 countries participating. Everyone accepted those were the rules. Whatever was going on in those countries, whatever autocrat or dictator, whoever was running those countries, everyone accepted for on that pitch, on that soccer field, when the ref made the decision, they may disagree with it, but those are the rules. And then a winner is declared at the end of the tournament. And that's sort of sports teaches those values. And just lastly, you know, it, it you know, this is an issue in the United States, but really for the whole world, even though we're seeing more prosperity in many places, you're continuing to see issues around childhood obesity, diabetes, and in many cases, it's because kids aren't active. So that's a whole separate issue that you need fun, engaging platforms like sports just to keep kids running and, and, and engaged and wanting to be outside and, and, and wanting to do things with physical coordination, you know, playing football, you name it. I mean, I've, uh, so so that all becomes very important, and I think sports is very unique from that standpoint. Sports are the greatest thing on earth, yep. Kamish. Sports are the greatest unifier. Sports are something that bring everybody together. Sports are something that actually have people actually put their swords aside yeah. and let's go yeah. ahead and compete. It's the greatest thing on earth, and sports are the reason why I know so much about Serbian horses. That's right. Yeah. right. I know a lot about those right. horses over there. You know, I, when the Olympics were created, they stopped war for the Olympics. Yeah. So just to your point about putting your swords down. Yeah, sports are awesome. Uh, let's talk about the business side of it all because you obviously have to handle all of that. I've always argued, now the NFL's ratings are stupid. You know, the NFL, you, everybody knows that. The NFL's ratings are bananas. That's a, that's a compliment, Roger. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Roger doesn't watch his show. Nope. Roger doesn't watch his show, but if he does, you know, you're like, hey, well, Roger. Check it out. Roger, you, you know, it happens. Um, whenever, I've always said that the NBA runs social. You know, you guys are a social media league. Now, linear ratings certainly matter. I understand for business-wise, those things matter. But you guys dominate on social and on digital. I assume that's a strategy, that's a plan. And how do you make that business profitable for you guys? Because you're going to be tasked with kind of leading into the new frontier of being a league that has fully embraced the digital and social media landscape. Yeah, well, like, I think part of it is endemic to our game. When you think about our players, um, unlike athletes in other sports that may have helmets or pads or be wearing hats or being in dugouts or only playing, you know, you know, coming to bat every so often or, you know, playing one way or whatever it is. I think in the NBA, you know, they're dressed like you are, Pat. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, good. They, you know, it's, it's like you see them, they're full body. They're the, the, the best players. They're on the floor virtually the entire game and they become in essence like YouTube stars. And it, it's interesting, they are, when you look at the kind of social media followings they have, and that by fans feeling that proximity to them, I mean, even if, if you think of the courtside seat at an NBA game, what other sport has that where the athletes are literally spilling onto you in the middle of the game? And I think by developing that closeness, that it, it creates interest in other aspects of the players. And, and one thing that's been fantastic about social media, it, it, we've always known these athletes were truly multidimensional. But when through social media, you say, all right, this is what this guy wears. This is what he cares about. This is the music he listens to. This is the car he drives. This is where he's from. He 
This is, he raises, you know, thoroughbred horses in the offseason, yes. as you were mentioning. That, so, uh, you know, to me, I, but I also hear you that that over time can't be a substitute for the live game. Instead, it should be a tease. It should be used as a, a way to engage people to say, okay, I now know more about Victor Wembanyama. I know his dad's from the Congo. He grew up in France. He played professional basketball there. He's seven foot four. He's an elegant guy. He speaks five languages. But now I want to see him play basketball. And, and that can't be lost. And, and I think that's part of our job, for, just like this in-season tournament, to bring people back to the game and the competition. And using, I'll just say lastly, you're talking about social and digital media. To me, you know, and, and of course ESPN is our partner, we're just scratching the surface in terms of the broadcast themselves on how much more engaging we can make them. And part of that will come through streaming technology where you can, if, look, a lot of people don't want anything to do with sports betting, but if you want something to do with sports betting, you'll be to, able to engage in the telecast because you'll say click, click. And for people who want nothing to do it, they won't have to see odds or anything else, but people are interested. For people who want to buy the shoes that the player is wearing, mm. click. For people who want to see um, different statistics, people want to play fantasy games, people who want to be talking to a group of friends while they're watching a game, they'll be able to do all that as well. And I think that will create a much more engaging experience for fans. I learned Kevin Hart's doing a mega cast this year, too. Yeah. All right, yeah. Kevin Hart's going to be on, part on, on ESPN2 on Saturday night during our championship game. Okay, Let's here go. we go. Kevin go. Hart's getting involved. That means the numbers are going to go up. But you just mentioned something there that is obviously a massive piece of the puzzle for all sports going forward. Go ahead, yeah, Connor. Yeah, Commissioner, you mentioned sports betting, and every league kind of deals with the whole, you know, oh, this is rigged because fans get pissed when their team loses. And the NFL right now and last year was going through the whole, you know, this is scripted section of, you know, their league. But – with the growth of sports betting, how do you manage not only like what you know books or companies you're associated with, but also maintaining kind of the the, the league and the game in its purest form before you know the sports gambling got all involved? And obviously, it's so early in its transition. Where do you see it? You know, 10, 15, 20 years down the road. Right. So, so you know, a, a, a many great points, and I I just begin by the. The system that I grew up in and lived with at the league for most of my time here, and then the, the, the regulate, regulated legal system we have now. So in the, in the so-called old days, with a few exceptions like Las Vegas, sports betting was illegal. C certainly sports betting online was I illegal. And for the most part, because there wasn't the internet as we know it now, the illegal betting took place largely in person, you know, betting slips, you know, meeting in certain places to, you know, to settle, et cetera. And that's how betting worked. And it was almost impossible, short of a scandal for the league to track the kind of money that was moving on our games. So now move to the, 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 the regulatory structure we have now, which I think was largely as a, a result of the internet disrupting sports betting in the same way, it's disrupting television. Now, when you think about streaming, it's really just internet television. So it's, it's now disrupting this industry. And in the regulatory framework now, where to the to extent it's legal, people are betting with their credit cards. So therefore, they have to identify themselves. Yep. And if there's any unusual activity, it kind of analogize it to a stock market. If there's insider trading or something's unusual happening, very sophisticated computers, from the stock exchange, their algorithms go off, flags go off, and they, they at least know to investigate. Why is this stock moving so much at this moment when there hasn't been a disclosure of any new information? So we can do similar things around our games now to try to track unusual behavior. So to me, the choice that we have as a league isn't, is there gonna be sports betting or not sports betting? It's gonna be, is there gonna be transparency? Is there gonna be a legal framework around it? So your question about our partners, so we choose to license our data. We're not directly in the sports business, sports betting business and don't think we should be, but we license the data feeds from our game to companies like FanDuel and DraftKings and MGM and others um, so that they have the authentic feed from the game. They get it in real time because as you guys know, a lot of the betting now around games, and this is something that's very different from betting that took place years ago, is what they call in play. Oh, yeah. People don't wanna just bet the game and then check what the results later. 
They want to be doing things throughout quarter scores, you know, number of defensive rebounds in the first half. All, you know, you can almost imagine any permutation that people can bet on, and they are. And so on one hand, I think it's frankly great for the league that it cause, creates additional engagement. On the other hand, just like any th- problematic behavior, we have to monitor it. We have to work with government regulatory agencies. We have to work collectively as leagues to do everything we can to monitor problematic gambling, to make sure that you know minors don't have access to it, to make sure that people who do engage in it don't do it over their head. I mean, it's, it's not that different from the fact that we're in the business of selling beer and alcohol. It's also, you know, it, it can be an enjoyable aspect of people's lives if done in a reasonable way, but also can cause enormous problems yeah. in people's lives. Yeah, the football world was dealing with that there for a bit. <laughs> yep. Yep. People were losing their jaws every single yeah. weekend, mm-hmm. pretty much. That's That all falls under your belt, I guess, as commission. What all do you oversee? Everything? You have your, like, for instance, I read on the internet this morning that you were the one that allowed the timeout to happen last night <laughs> by oh. LeBron to Austin Reeves because that won the game for the Lakers. That's what I heard. You were on the phone while it was happening <laughs> and said, that was a timeout, was it not? That's what I heard you do. Can you clarify whether or not you do that and that's how you spend your uh, evenings, so, Kamish? You know, that was so, it was late Eastern time where I am. I was, truth be told, I was watching the game, lying in bed, I don't have any buzzers or buttons or anything <laughs> that had any impact We're on me. Breaking! And, and, that's and, breaking and, and I don't news. say as I as I was watching that that that's what no, is known at at the league office as a very close call. Very close. Very close. It was a close call. Yeah, very, very, <laughs> very close. Yeah, I do find it funny though that as the commissioner, and I guess you get paid well enough to kind of handle it, anything that seems up or with the gambling now or with obviously fan bases, it goes immediately to Adam Silver. Mm-hmm. Adam Silver's the one who made him call it last night, and that's just your life. Hey, you're doing an incredible job, though. I think you should take a victory lap at some point. And you coming on this show is so incredibly stupid. I assume there's a lot of people that told you not to do that. We're very grateful you did, boss man. We appreciate it. By the way, no one told me not to do it, and it's uh, it's a thrill to be here. And uh, uh, I'm going to be. And by the way, Indianapolis are are you right in Indianapolis or outside Indianapolis? We're outside Northeast, but we'll come to you, pal. We'll come to you down there for the All Star Week, which is going to be fantastic here in Indy. You you know we're 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 using Lucas Oil are on you? Saturday night for yeah. the Skills Challenge, or what's it for? Yeah, for the Skills Challenge, we're going to use Lucas Oil. Are you having Larry so we're gonna, Bird? We're going to be out? in your home stadium. And that's also where the celebrity the game's going to be. Ooh, celebrity games in uh, Lucas Oil Stadium. Oh, the opposite. And I think oh, yeah. you would be bringing in, in a big crowd if you were there. No, nobody wants you to see you. You got your jersey already. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Thank you. This is not for Jordan. It's for the year, 2023. Uh, okay. yeah. three-point line over here. That's an NBA three-point line, but I'm in this gym. I'm in this Thunderdome. We got the hoops here. Obviously, we're big fans of the sport. Uh, but the stadium, this is like whenever the Final Four goes oh, into yeah. the it's a tough to shoot. back. Oh, yeah. tough to shoot early. Oh, no, Adam. I'm going to have to start working <laughs> the, the, outside. The limo, your limo will come right to the Thunderdome. <laughs> All right. Pick you up for the celebrity game. Okay. We'll be ready for you. All right. Well, we can't wait to host you. We appreciate the hell out of you for joining us, and congrats on the success of the in-season tournament, the NBA as a whole, and everything you got going on. Ladies and gentlemen, Commissioner of the NBA, Adam Silver. Yeah, Commissioner! That was so stupid. You said nobody told me not to. That's why the NBA gets it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You heard what he was saying? Yeah, we're going to have options. Go ahead. And if you want to see stats and stuff, we can just turn it on. Amazon's doing that with football. Yeah, it's cool. So he's just going to adapt it to him. That's smart because a lot of over and unders in basketball. You know, a lot of yeah. a lot of things oh, yeah. that are very engombling, pretty quick to be able to decipher, but also hard to find sometimes. Actual stats and facts, who has it right, up to date, and everything like that. As you're going in in basketball, you could bet on like like somebody making a shot coming up. Yeah, you can bet on method of next basket. So last year, I think this is new this year. Last year it was like okay, first basket, and they developed that into method of first basket. Mm-hmm. So like LeBron to you know have a layup or whatever or a dunk, and now you can do that in the middle of the game if it's like the second or third quarter. But it's a fun Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, oh yeah, oh, dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. great, great. It's so many. Rebounds, says shot, like just so many different ways, so many different things you could bet on. And I don't think he fully understood my social media statement. I'm no. talking about like, hey, your games yeah, yeah. take over. Yeah. Like I watch games on Twitter. Yes. Because they'll just show me the hot. 
Like every Most 10 minutes, a highlight will mm-hmm. happen. It's like, oh, I saw what Zion did. Like, he was 11 or 12 last yeah, night. Yeah. I actually saw him take it to the rack. I don't, I don't uh, think I saw him outside much, but I watched an entire game from like seven different updates yeah. on X or Twitter or whatever. They show me highlights. They show me videos. I get the stats. It's like it, you could watch an entire game on there because there's so many of them. It's like once they start, I think, really diving in, diving into that, it's going to be a whole other ball game as well. But you're right with the partnership with ESPN. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah, I mean, which yeah. is certainly the only reason why he came on this program. So shout out to ESPN. Thank you. Yes, yeah. thank you, ESPN. Thank you, ESPN. Hey, don't forget, you're also. I mean, that just kind of got slid in, but you're playing in the freaking yeah, All Star so, Game, Celebrity like, All Star Game. Go. That's what it sounded like, right? Let's go. Like huh? Okay, okay. we thought on. there was a chance, right? In Indy, we thought there was a chance. Sure. Right? All sure. you gotta do is stuff Harleysy one time, and the NBA <laughs> world will love you forever. Har- Harleysy Baumgartner's going up for a layup. Bro, I'm spike. hoping I'm on Harleysy's team. <laughs> Okay, me and Harleasy are going to really – he's a player? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, oh. Jump. Shooting in a stadium. Hour two is on the other side. We'll see you then. Hi, how's it going? My name is Pat McAfee. used to hold balls for Adam Vinatieri. Now I'm in his home state. College game day is absolutely electric. And Brookings <laughs> – College game day has made the voyage to Brookings, South Dakota to experience a game with the best fans in college football. I unfortunately cannot attend because I have a game this Sunday, so I sent a man I trust to make my picks. A man who is my holder for almost a decade. Please be nice to him. Welcome this week's celebrity guest picker, Pat McAfee. Go big, go blue, go Jacks. Let's see Auburn. Yes, everybody saw this. The best fake punt in the world. What do you think, Pat? I absolutely loved it all the way up until execution time. That is not one we like to show in the brand headquarters and punting and kicking world. Oh, dance off. Oh, let's get weird. Oh. Yes. Oh. Duck that, huh? Bang! Right on oh. the top of the dome. That makes it a lot easier when you got a dummy standing right in front of you like that. Running, running. He's oh! Hi, Luke! Daniel Russo! Wax on! Wax off! Knee to the face! World yes, Series! Go! Yes, go! Yes! He's being spit with that 15. They celebrate by doing shotguns. And I'm going to be a fan of that. I'm going to the University of Virginia Catholic. That was great. Whoa! But I'm going Trey. Oh. Please no excuse my dumb friend Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> since 4 a.m. College game day comes to town. They lose their mind. The population of this state is about 800,000. And when the Jackrabbits take the field, they're alongside all 800,000 South Dakotans. The Dakota Bunker was in Fargo for far too long. Today, 5 o'clock local time, the Dakota Marker is back in beautiful Brookings, South Dakota. The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pay! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice, could change their life.
We have sound this time. Yeah, yeah. Welcome back to Trenches Wednesday, December 6th, 2023. Hour two of the program starts now. Football. It's happening uh, tomorrow night. Yeah. Oh, and tomorrow night's game actually has the lowest over under since 1993. That's one half of the talks at the table yeah. at Boston Connor, whose New England Patriots take on one half of the hammer. Don. Don. Cowboys tone digs his Pittsburgh Steelers yep. and the other half of the talks at the table at Ty Schmidt. We can't wait to watch. Cannot wait. You know, I, listen, I've been watching stuff like this all year. It's nice when people are finally <laughs> talking about someone else setting a record for the lowest over under ever. I, it's actually quite refreshing. We got an Iowa Hawkeye football game happening tomorrow exactly. night on Thursday. Thursday night football. We have Bill Belichick, Steve Belichick, Bye. and Bill, uh, Robert Kraft Bye. taking on <laughs> Mitchell Trubisky mm -hmm. and TJ White on prime <laughs> with Al Michaels, Kirk Herbstreit, <laughs> Kaylee Hartung, Carissa Thompson, White. Ryan Fitzmagic, White. Tony Gonzalez, White. Richard Sherman, White. Big Wit. I think it's everybody. Yeah. yeah. Marshawn Lynch. Wide. Maybe Ben. Oh, Taylor Rooks. Can't forget Taylor Rooks. Wide. Wide. Michael, right. Michael Wide. Smith usually pops up in You're, there. Wide. Wide. Kyle. And the Dude Perfect Boys. Tyler. Tyler. Oh. Tyler. Oh. Sam Come on. Also, potentially the, the barber shop. Yep. Yeah. Uh huh. Mav. I'd, I'd recommend. That's a big – think about all the humans. We just – big production. Yeah. Amazon's like, hey, we're trying to do the NFL right. Mm -hmm. Amazon's like, we want to be in business with the NFL for a long time. Sure. So we're going to – you know, we're making one game each week. We're going to try to do it as big as we possibly can. The people they hired to okay. run this thing, uh -huh. all very high jobs at other places before. They did like the Apple thing where you just yeah. take like the mm -hmm. top people. Mm -hmm. Like, here we go. You get Al Michaels. Call yeah. me. Let's go. Uh, do you believe in me? Yeah, you get him. Do this whole thing. Herb Street's been Herbie. the number one guy in college football for 30 years, pretty much. Let's bring him in. Calling for him. And we just did the whole thing. And it's like, tomorrow night. Strap it in. The Eagle Patriots. Yeah. Pittsburgh Steelers. Damn right. Two proud franchises. The proudest. Who are performing God awfully right well, now. Yeah. Battle it out for a show of all shows to kick off week 14. I, I want to preface this by saying I am someone that absolutely loves Maction. I watch it every Tuesday and Wednesday, okay? Uh, I am someone that doesn't believe in these bad primetime football games. It's not. You bet unders. Exactly. I love every single thing about them. All those people you said, you shouldn't see their faces one time tomorrow night. Don't turn that on. Don't do it. I, I wouldn't recommend it. I highly recommend against doing it. You're saying Tony. take a Thursday off. Take man. a Thursday Tony. off. Okay. We are right here <laughs> week 13, week 14, whatever it is. Maybe we recharge our batteries tomorrow night because it's going to be a long rest of the season. Okay? Tony. And there's no reason to waste any energy on tomorrow night's game. Con man, you're saying you need to watch this. Because Accrasure, it's an Accrasure. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a primetime game in Pittsburgh. I don't care you don't think was, Ed Bechtold is going to be Donner? I don't Bingo. care if it was on the moon, Pat. Which we have been. We've Tone. talked about it plenty of times. I, yep. wouldn't, I wouldn't even watch it then. People love different settings. We've learned that exactly. with our show. Yeah. You yeah. just put our show somewhere else. People would just, what is that? Just like Adam Silver said with the new courts. Mm -hmm. Right. That's a little different. What's going on here? <laughs> oh, still <laughs> dumbass. All right. Yeah. We'll change the channel. But nonetheless, uh, Akershers is a, an environment. It's going to be romping. Yeah. Yinzers are going to be jacked up. And also, Yinzers know, know what they're signing up for going in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, this game's going to stink. I'm Everyone interested knows. to see if they do show up tomorrow night. What? Tony. Tony, they're going to be there, Tony. They're going to be there. <laughs> Primetime game in Pittsburgh? They're going to wow. be there. What are you saying? I, I, I hope they do. Holy shit. What I is mean, this guy talking about? This is the biggest. 12-year NFL vet, <laughs> Super Bowl champion from Pittsburgh, more specifically, Moon Township. He's not. The same place as Joe Narda, greatest weatherman of all time. Miss you, Joe. Love you, Joe. The only person that doesn't like him, A.Q. Shipley. Right. A.Q. Wow. Did you hear this about Pittsburgh? What happened to our city, dude? I don't know what happened, but if they, remember you if couldn't I, go to a game as a kid, you could yeah. literally. You could, the reason why you I'm couldn't go to a preseason game. The reason why I'm such a big Penguins fan, only game that my family could really go to, except for punt pass and kick, if yeah. I won our way down to the entire thing, impossible to get in there. Impossible yeah. tickets, the ones to get in, so overpriced because there's not a chance to get in there because this is what we, yeah. this is what people do. Yep. Their fodder, yep, their fodder's fodder. Bud. Their fodder's 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 neighbor. Bingo. They've been doing that this entire right. time. Mm -hmm. And now primetime football against the New England Patriots and Tony Diggs saying he's worried. What the hell happened in Pittsburgh, AQ? That's not real. Know. But if you, can you imagine if we turn on that game? And it looks like a pit game? Third and fourth well, that's, quarter, that's and different. they're playing. 
Oh my. And it's and it's seat. empty. No way. It's that would magic. ruin. It's not. That would ruin the whole thing. They don't play it. No. Yeah. Don't play. Don't do it. Don't I, play Renegade I, tomorrow night if it's I, not. So I overreacted. Out. I just looked at SeaGeek. There's not very many tickets available. Yeah. So people really people are gonna be there. Okay. Jesus. What, is the Steelers? what are you trying to put into the yeah, universe? No. You're telling us not to watch it. You're saying people aren't going. What's your What's your deal? Pittsburgh Steelers are on prime time. Yeah. Yes. Get a chance to show off Acrisure Stadium. It's the Patriots. The TJ Watt, a man who's getting conned by the NFL. Yeah. yeah. Guy's getting held every single play. This guy's getting robbed. Biggest fan base in the sport. Well, that's, that's nine year NFL fan. Darius J. Butler asked. Right. He's right. It's true. It's 100% true. These are the two biggest fan bases in the NFL. I'm just saying, this is going to be the worst. Cowboys fans would say they're bigger. Niners fans, yep. I guess they've been kind of. Stats would uh, prove Packers. differently, though. Okay, I love that. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Niners fans are everywhere. Test, Pittsburgh, yeah. Pittsburgh might enjoy this game, though. A defensive battle. That's right. Yeah. You know? Everything Just, uh, TJ does. Yeah, defense. Oh, mama, I'm in here. What if they do that 10 times tonight? Oh, Instead of doing it just, or tomorrow night. Instead of doing it just once, let's do it 10 times. Yeah. Anytime TJ beats his guy. Mm-hmm. Oh, mama, I'm in and then Bill Belichick would just be so caught up in the music because we know he's, True. Uh-huh. he's a man who, who fancies good, good music. Right. And other we things. Know. Football. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what you're talking about? Yep. Absolutely. What if he's just so distracted? Army, you know, Navy. It's, it's so bad. Army, Ooh, Navy coming right out of the Yeah, no, no, I, absolutely. I, I am on the opposite end of Tony Spectrum here. I think this is the biggest money game we've ever had. I, I think there. this is where, if you're down this season gambling, this is where you get it back. Because guess what? You can guess the score. 3 nothing, 2 nothing, 10 nothing, 7 nothing. 3-3. Three, three, a lot of options. Six, three. Yeah, a lot of options. Ten's but, crazy. But really, you just need to pick those bottom options. And yeah, it, it is crazy. Let, let's look at the NFL right now. We're, we're talking about a lot of backup quarterbacks, right? I'm more pumped to watch the New England Patriots going forward for the rest of the season than I ever have been this year because of the fact it's time to find our backup quarterback. We need to figure out who's going to take the reins. Who's going to be backup to whoever you guys draft Bingo. High. <laughs> who's going to be the guy that is going to help the real guy next year? And that's where I'm already at. Now, I'm looking for a hell of a performance from Zappi. I'm thinking 10 of 17, 115 yards, maybe a pick in there, maybe 15 rush yards, big fourth and five that we oh, get. Oh, with a momentum. That massive momentum. And then next play, TJ Watt strip sack. But again... <laughs> I think this is where you get your money for this entire NFL right. season going into Christmas. And we're not sure if he's right there. No, no, no This I, one I, could be a high-scoring affair. You never know what Mitch Trubisky's going to do. That's right. Yeah. Joining us now might be a guy who has a, a little bit of a clue. He's the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. This guy has big brain, loves being the one that projects ideas and thoughts on what could happen in the future. Absolutely. He's a father of 10, a COVID survivor, the current president of Ooh. the state of Ohio. Ladies and gentlemen, A.J. Hawk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Jay, did you hear Tone Diggs was worried that maybe the uh, Yinzers weren't going to fill up Acrisure Stadium? And then Connor's like, listen, I'm looking for next year's backup. Who's yep. potentially going to be backing up? Not a lot of hope on this Thursday night coming up, AJ. Yeah, there's not. And that's surprising for Tone because anyone, like Steelers fans travel, right? You, anywhere you go. I know when I was playing, if if you're the, like Steelers fans are like Packers fans, you go to an away stadium, you're going to see a ton of Steelers mm-hmm. fans there. So why would you think they're not going to show up to their home turf? Tone. They've been there. We've done that. We like going to other places. Yeah, well, the other places, <laughs> normally it's where people live now, and it's near, and they feel like an uh, obligation to go put on for the Pittsburgh Steelers. What Tone is saying, I think, is that the Pittsburgh fans are feeling a little bit differently about the Steelers this year than maybe mm-hmm. years past. Sure. And even though they're still above five, hey, here we go. Yeah. Still above five. Probably the five seed in the playoffs. Got an opportunity to really do this thing That's still. Right. Everything's still in front of them. Everything's still right there in front of them. Now, coming off a tough loss to Arizona. Obviously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Real tough. At home. Mm-hmm. In yep. Hampshire. Uh-huh. Yep. A couple of delays. Obviously, a lot of people dressed up like seats toward the end of that game. You asked them to go into the concessions a couple of different times yeah. whenever there was lightning. And they were losing this Arizona Cardinals team that only has two wins on the entire season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And with everything that's happened, it was tough for the injuries to say, yeah, we should be doing this instead of something else. So they may be bailed out of there. Sure. But this year, it's been a different vibe from Steelers fans. And I, I'm not 100% sure why. I don't know why this has become the season where more people are giving up on the hope that we can ugly win football games forever, even in the playoffs. But it does feel different this year. Well, you just, I think there's a realization now that you can't ugly win yourself to a Super Bowl. And that's all that really matters. And Amen. it's kind of getting frustrating. Amen. How many Lombardis? Six. 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 Come on, D, but you know how many Lombardi's. Ty, right? Six, six. Six, six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a big one tomorrow night. Yeah. Usual. Who? Yeah. 
Who's the better six <laughs> Lombardi Trophy having program? Let's put one on the line. Let's, let's yeah, put pink one slips. on the line. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, six versus six. Two Lombardi swing. Winner this will goes be home. One you goes. You do that, we're talking 45 million people, 50 million people watch this. Game. Boom. Okay. Do it. Easy. Maserati. Do it. Yeah. <clears throat> Why not? Do it right now. Craft. Do it. Put it up. Rooney. Do it. it. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow night, Thursday night football. Lombardi's mm-hmm. on in season how, tournament. How about this too? In season. <laughs> Call it the Lombo Cup. The Lombo Boom. Cup. Yes. Love it. Losing head coach, maybe. Guess what? You're fired. How about that? Wow. What if we do that? Two legends. The Lombo Cup is becoming yeah. Hall of Fame coach fired cup. The yeah. Fire Bowl. Paint the grass gold. There the end zones will be gold tomorrow. You hear what we're yep. doing here, AJ? Yes. Yeah, these are all these new crazy ideas. I heard Adam Silver come on and talk about all the things in the future. That's what you guys are doing in real time. Adam Silver did say it. I'm not making this up. He said he learns from each other. We all learn yep. from yeah. And said mm-hmm. us as if we were a part of that Roger with the ideas that. that we bring. We got a bunch of them, Rog. <laughs> yeah. Rog, we got a bunch of these ideas. You should think about it. Wow. Yeah, definitely. Paint the field gold. That will be so yeah. sweet. Think about how... Happy Bezos will be on his yacht. Oh, yeah. so God. he'd be so happy, jacked yeah. up. Oh my God, we're doing it. Uh, and see, we we got we got the Mega Bowl. Boom. Yep. Boom. Bill, we Bill, got the Mega Bowl. Bill's got to coach the game shirtless. Yep. Tony and I will do jerseys. Oh. If if the Pittsburgh Steelers win, I'll wear a Steelers jersey Friday. Whoa. Boom. That's already happening. And right if now. the Patriots win, no. <laughs> even if Roger Goodell doesn't agree, right? And Kraft and Rooney don't agree to put up a trophy, yeah. And Roger Goodell doesn't agree for the Mega Bowl announcement mm-hmm. to happen within the next twenty four hours. You two definitely doing the jersey thing. Ab- absolutely, have to do it. Uh, yeah, Tony already agreed to it. Even though this is the first time this has been brought up, he's already agreed. I Thank you, tell. Tony, for doing that. Thank That's you, really good. The program, yeah. Tony. Don't worry, I got a beautiful red Mac Jones jersey that you won't be wearing. So. <laughs> what jersey will he be You're either wearing Mew or, or Ike Taylor or Ooh. a Terry Bradshaw jersey. Uh, bingo. TB. Bingo. We know where we're headed. Joining us now Damn. is a guy who uh, might have uh, some more thoughts on how his brother's team tomorrow <laughs> could potentially win a Lombardi trophy. The yeah. seventh. In the Mega Bowl. Record breaking. Ladies and gentlemen, D butt. Brilliant. Hey. Maybe the D butt claws here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, obviously future first round, uh, first ballot Hall of Famer. He's the third person ever in the Houston Texans Ring of Honor. He's with us every single week. Ladies and gentlemen, JJ Huck. Yeah, okay, good shirt today. Everybody loves his shirts. That's a good shirt. <laughs> nice shirt yourself, buddy. Nice shirt yourself. Glad to be here. Happy to be on the show. Sounds like we're in the middle of a beautiful think storm right now. Just keep it rolling. Yeah. Okay. Just keep it rolling. It is a think storm. And we're not bringing any umbrellas to this entire thing. No, we aren't. All (laughs) ideas are good ideas right now, JJ, okay? So what Darius basically alluded to Mm -hmm. is tomorrow night's game that doesn't have a lot of intrigue. Thursday night football, Patriots, Steelers. We need to put a Lombardi trophy up from each of them. They each got six. Put up the pink slips. And obviously, yep. winner takes hey, both. You added this graphic, correct? I'm sorry. The graphic graphic is you had great. to add what a graphic. Steve. You added Steve what? and the owner in there, correct? Or is this really going out on Amazon? <laughs> Bob. That's pretty Bob. good, AJ. Jeez. What are you talking about? What do you mean? It looks perfect. It looks amazing. Honestly, I, I, you got me. I assume this is what they're running on Amazon right now. Nah, Amazon did run the Bill Belichick one. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. but there was This one's better. There was certainly a decision made to add, yeah, a couple more key figures that'll be in tomorrow night's game. That's, That's right. right. Robert Kraft could be in here more than we ever imagined yeah. Yeah. if he just offers up one of his Lombardis uh, against the Rooney. JJ, do you think that is a fair mm-hmm. kind of proposal for tomorrow night's Thursday night football game between these two storied franchises, JJ? I think it'd be – the interesting question about it would be which team would be more comfortable doing it. Uh, I think, obviously, Steelers being at home, obviously, Connor doesn't sound very confident whatsoever. Uh, got a is phone that, call. Is that Rooney? Is that, yeah, is that I think it is. Yeah. You have a what? landline? No, wait. Landline? You turn the screen so we can see. Is it the – That's the old school. Oh, yeah. yeah got a cool. landline? I'm in – I'm in uh, – my my one of my best D line coaches of all time, one of my favorite guys ever, uh, Bill Kolar. He's getting inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame last night, so I'm in Vegas for his induction oh, into the Hall of Fame. This guy's always on the move. Uh-huh. You're always on the move. You know that, JJ. <sighs> I mean, you're, this is coming from the guy that has a private jet in his backyard, ready gassed up at any time. What was oh, that? Geez. What was that? It's all electric. It's not gas, obviously. <laughs> yeah. You know that. We're taking care of these well, electrics, things. even. But worse. I'm always here. Well, yeah. <laughs> You, you were just in New York. Batteries. But every time I talk to you, where am I at? 
right here. Every time we talk to you, where are you? New York, right. Vegas, yeah. Houston, London, Houston, Houston, London. London. Mm-hmm. Oh, big win on big Saturday. Win. Yeah. Big win on yeah. Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Gumpy, yeah. what happened on Saturday with the Burnley boys? 5 nothing. The lads were buzzing. Didn't have to park the bus. Unbelievable from the boys. Oh, man, that's awesome. I like that. Big momentum, obviously. We're just rolling right now. We're One game back. win streak? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Um, for, huge. Unfortunately, huge. uh... Nope, nope, nope. Ran into a tough field. Wolverhampton no squad yesterday. <laughs> what? what? What do you mean? They already had another game since Saturday? How? Molyneux Stadium's a tough place to go and get points. What happened? Molson Lost Stadium? one nothing. Oh. oh, we scored five on Saturday. We can't score one? Come oh, on. Come on. What's All right. the, I thought All right. we had right. it. Is that the actual caption right. on this tweet? Yeah. 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 Mm. Wow. Well, what, what would you like it to be, Connor? We suck. Whoa! Whoa. Whoa. Hey, Whoa. What's this, guys? They just won five far. nothing. That was too far. I'm sorry. We just won five nothing. We had a, a we had Neil, one blunder. Neil. We had one big. There you go. Huge result. Yeah, that's what. Look we at do. how happy. Look at how happy Brownie is. He just looks so happy. It was great. It was oh. a great day. You're saying Brownie? You know his name? That's huge. Classic you know all Brownie. the boys' names? Yes, absolutely. Any photo would have oh. popped up there. You would have been like, oh, look at uh, yeah. Tootsie. Yeah. Ah, I love that guy. You would, have been able to, you would have been able to do that with the, with the boys, with the squad? Yes, I'm very I'm, – I'm, I know them very well. Stop. I know them all. Well, tell them to start yeah, winning. It's starting to get really tough to re- remain a fan. <laughs> I, all, everybody I know is into this European soccer. I played soccer growing up. never really got into it. And now I have a team. I got a hat. I got a hat. Yeah. yeah. Burnley's my team. And then all I realize is – I feel like Mara, the Giants owner. Yeah. All I do is spend my time explaining why our team stinks. And I'm sick of it. <laughs> Done with it. Yep. I'm sick of it. We need to start winning, JJ. We bummed more- out. I, I am bummed out. I'm bummed out. I'm bummed out about it. Why? Saturday was the highlight. I was telling everybody. You see them Burnley boys. Yeah. Check it out. You see Tootsie. You see Benny. Hell and yeah. Smithy. It was fun. Yeah. That'll be fun. And we're going to do that. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> yes. Nah. Yes, we're going to get it rolling. We're going to get it rolling. Well. All right, speak I up. enjoy. I appreciate the fanhood. I am very thankful. Uh, it has been really cool for everybody who watches and follows along. It would. It would, certainly will be a lot more fun. Uh, the five to zero was a lot more fun to get the text messages uh, <laughs> on Saturday than than yesterday and other days. Uh, yeah. So hey, boys that are watching over there in Burnley, let's live a happier lives, all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Let's put the ball. And in that more than the other team does. There it is. And when we put it in, guess what? Everybody's standing on each other's shoulders right in front of that net mm-hmm. for the rest of the game. Exactly. Boom. Just stand there. Just stand there and nobody move. Do you want to win or do you not? You tell us. Let's move along to a team that is winning. A team that you might play for, actually, not just own. Houston Texans. It's not just, obviously, we had C.J. Stroud on yesterday. He was awesome mm-hmm. to talk to. Yeah. And his story, we're learning more and more about him. The better and better it gets on it, it is a wild phenomenon that Houston Texans have a front man for the next 15 years that are going to be said. That defense, though, J.J. Ooh. Hey, they're balling over yeah. there. They're a real deal. This team yeah. is a real deal, J.J. It's pretty crazy, man. They've got such a young core, which is awesome to see. C.J.'s obviously incredible. Uh, sad to see Tank go down the way he went down. That's that's tough because he's such an impressive young player. Um, but then you go to the defensive side of the ball. You got Will Anderson Jr. with two sacks, uh, batted balls, TFLs. He's playing incredible against the run. He's now starting to get the sacks to go along with the pressures he's had all season. And then you got Stingley, who just comes back. He's got four interceptions in three games. And those are two young guys on the defensive side of the ball that are playing extremely well. You got John Grenard. Uh, on the other side from Will Anderson. So I got to give credit to the defensive coordinator, Matt Burke. He was my D-line coach last year in Arizona. He's now the D coordinator there doing some incredible things with this defense. And I think you just see them growing in confidence as the year goes on, getting better and better. Uh, I've said it. I think that D'Amico should be the coach of the year. I think that you guys in Indianapolis have a guy who's also got a great argument for coach of the year and Shane Steichen. Um, but Really, really exciting stuff happening in Houston, and I think it's going to be exciting for a long time. Why do you think it's happening? Well, you know, like everybody's going to try to do this. Obviously, young guys hit. Yeah, but, like, why are the young guys hitting? You know, because mm-hmm. a lot of excuses are made for young guys that don't hit. They go, oh, they're going into a bad situation. There was no situation worse than Houston no. a couple years ago. You know, so it's like, why they, these guys are just special, you think? Like, CJ said Derek Stingley is the most talented guy on the team by far no, with – Everything he has, most athletic guy. Is it just they picked the right guys? Is that what it was? I mean, I, I think they certainly have had success with their draft picks. I think they have got some guys who are special. But as you know, as AJ knows, as we all know, in this league, if you get put in a good situation with a good coaching staff who has the right mindset, who has the right knowledge base, and who can 
get that information across to you properly and get you to understand it and implement it, that's when you're successful. Uh, and this coaching staff, D'Amico, starts with him and then it trickles down through his whole staff. These guys have the ability to take their knowledge, to take their wisdom and pass it to the players in a way that they understand it and then also give them confidence. And these players are just building that confidence week after week. And it really, really helps in the National Football League when you got a quarterback who plays at the level CJ is playing so early on and also has the confidence and the leadership ability to do the things he's doing. Not everybody has that. He, he is a special cat. Go ahead, AJ. JJ, what, what makes somebody a good coach? You mentioned, like, yeah, they can explain what they're thinking or whatever. And you mentioned Matt Burke, your old D-line coach, who's the coordinator there. I was lucky enough to, to play under him uh, in Cincinnati for a year. I love the dude. Super smart yeah. guy. But what makes somebody good? Like, honestly, there's a lot of bad coaches. We know that. But there's also a lot of good coaches out there. What do you think sets the good ones apart? I think it's a combination of things. And I think having the right combination is what makes it great. So you have to be knowledgeable. You have to be able to understand the game, to be able to game plan, to be able to change within a game, to see, you know, play that chess match. Okay, this is what they did on their opening 15 plays. We need to, this means that they're trying to get us into man coverage and see how we're going to make our adjustments. Okay, now I'm going to adjust like this to try and throw them off. You have to have that knowledge base to be able to do that. Then you also have to be able to give that knowledge to guys who may not have the same level. So it's really tough for a rookie coming in to get settled in a new city. They're literally getting a new house. They're getting a new lifestyle. They're getting a new induction into the NFL. And also you're trying to teach them, you know, cloud coverage. You're trying to teach the quarterback how to read these route concepts. You have to be able to, to deliver that and have the patience and the care to be able to do it. And then on top of all that, you have to be a motivator. You have to be able to pull the best out of your guys. I, I, I was talking about Bill Kolar yesterday at his event. And one of the things that he was able to do is extract greatness from me that I didn't know I had within myself. A great coach can pull something out of you, can get things, can get you to do things that you yourself didn't even know you had. Yeah, whenever Tom McMahon came into my life, uh, he was my last special teams coordinator. It was like the way he talked to me to like make me better. It was like, oh, this is probably how people should have been. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. like this is probably how people yeah. should have been doing this for all sports that I played, not just this one. Like a little bit of shit talk, but then also when I wanted to go to war with somebody, like, yeah, let's go rot. Like, yeah. let's let's tear. The, yeah, let's go kill this person. <laughs> and then also back, it was like he, he almost understood you. You know, and it's like he, I felt like he understood me as a person. That's a bit. That's not easy to do though. Some coaches, no. that's like a that's a very special trait I think that some people have. Yes, and I think that it, it really is something that separates great coaches from good coaches. And I also think it separates how good a person's career can be, how it can change lifestyles, literally. Like, think about every guy that gets drafted every single year, and we, we judge these guys quicker and quicker every year. We want first-round picks to be great the second they step on the field. Sure. We don't give them any time to develop. We want them to be great, and we don't take into account the coaching staff. We don't take into account the situation. We just say, you need to be good. Well, in reality, not every coach has these abilities. Not every coach can develop a player, and we're just moving on yeah, faster and faster. Yeah, but we just assume they do because he's the NFL. He's the NFL <laughs> coach. Uh -huh. that's, what, that's literally what people think, I think. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought that myself. Like, I, I, I got to the NFL, and I just assumed everything everybody is doing is how it's supposed to be done. <laughs> so I, I got on the plane on my first road trip in the NFL. And you know this, they, they go down the aisle, you know, they bring your meal. I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll take the steak. Thank you very much. And then they come down with a full tray of candy, every candy bar you can imagine. I'm like, yes, I will take Reese's. I will take Kit Kat. I'll take that. Then they come down with an ice cream tray. And it's like ice cream sundaes with hot fudge. I was like, Ooh. oh, wow, this is how we do it in the NFL. Yes, I will take an ice cream sundae. Then they come around with warm chocolate chip cookies. I was like, this is oh. fantastic. Oh. I love this. This is great. I just assumed that, like, this is what you do in the NFL. You eat everything they offer you, and they wouldn't offer it to you if it wasn't good for you because you're be in the protein, NFL. Yeah. Ice cream. Uh, <laughs> sure. So, and then, like, three months in, like, I saw, a, I see a picture of myself my rookie year. I'm like, dude, you were fat as hell. Like, I, I was, I had baby fat out, so I had to cut out all that and, like, recalibrate. Oh, okay. This, maybe, maybe not everything in the NFL is exactly how you're supposed to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's every business. Uh, there's a lot of greats in the NFL, though. Go ahead, D-Bug. Oh, yeah. You played with one of them, uh, D-Hop, who played a long time, put up crazy numbers with, I would say, not the greatest Whoa. list of quarterbacks. Not going to throw any of your teammates under the bus, but another guy in that category. Who are some? Probably, yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> probably in his own category. Ten um, straight 
thousand yard season now for Mike Evans. What do you see from this guy? Hall of Famer, man. Hall of Famer. I think Mike, uh, the consistency, the the level at which he plays at, the the ability to do it over years, and, and like you said, it's not necessary. He had Brady for a couple of years, but it hasn't necessarily been with the most elite level of all time. Uh, and I think the crazy thing about Mike is that he just doesn't get the same hype yeah. as you feel like he deserves because he's kind of like he doesn't he, he's reserved. He's he doesn't do anything like crazy flashy. He's not out there a ton. And I think that he is. Somehow, for a guy who's had a thousand yards every single year of his career, he's underrated, and he shouldn't be. Like he, he should be a first ballot Hall of Famer. I think he will be, and uh, I think we should appreciate his game because it's it's pretty special what he's doing at the highest level. Ten straight, Ten straight. Sir, sir, sir. That's crazy. It just health, it's, health wise, how do you last? You know, let alone quarterback and change and everything year, like sure. that. Got a Super Bowl too. I mean, yeah, his quarterbacks also in that D hop range. Yeah, hey. he's a free agent, right, after this year? Where is he going? Shouldn't be. He, hey, he needs that. I, I said it before the year started when they had the back and forth. He should have got that Larry Fitzgerald, Arizona Cardinals treatment. Forever. Like yeah. Tampa, hey, as long as you want to be here, you're going to be here. Ten, ten straight thousand-yard seasons with that, you know, that list of quarterbacks. Like, that's, that's crazy. Come to Indianapolis. Yeah. Come yeah. to Indianapolis. That would Come work. On. I told CJ yesterday he need, needs to take a couple weeks off every season. I don't know if you saw that. Tell him, <laughs> tell him to take off his two. No, they're, they're doing a good job in Indy, man. Shane has done a really, really good job up there. It's very impressive what they put together. Gardner's playing well. I mean, they're they're doing a good job. The Forest, Zaire, like, it's it's a good crew, man. Yeah, hell yeah. You're damn right it is. Mm-hmm. Hey, yo. Yeah. The AFC South in general, like people sleep a little bit on Wagon. it. Obviously, Trevor just got hurt. Best division, but AFC football. South is rolling. Might be three teams in the playoffs. Jeff Saturday brought that to my attention yesterday. He's like, "Hey, three AFC South teams might be able to make it with the way everything's set up." Now, Patriots at two and ten are still in the hunt somehow. So, well, there's a lot of <laughs> they're not. There's a lot of hypothetical <laughs> scenarios nah. with the playoffs. Big ass bubble, right? Now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The yeah there's a lot of bubbles. Like it went out. There's 12 backup quarterbacks though. Uh, out of 32, nine of them in the AFC. I mean, there's so much that can still unfold. Now, let's go to college football real quick, and uh, good luck here. Ty, go ahead. Yeah, JJ. Yeah, great. This is great. Listen, basically everyone has an opinion on this. A lot of people are pissed off. There's a lot of swords being, you know, shoved into people's throats, in people's backs. Georgia fans are pissed. They think they should be in, probably should be in. Florida State obviously is up in arms. You go undefeated. Do everything you can do, but they're on the outside looking in. Uh, what's your opinion on the way this <laughs> kind of all played out? What are you laughing about, JJ? Yeah, is, is this a joke? Is this a funny joke, JJ? Kids are in the yeah, yeah. This, is funny, not a la- this is not a laughing matter. And also, I'm curious, I'm pretty sure you played in a Rose Bowl, but like now for like Georgia and Florida State, like how many of those guys do you think are just going to say, like, ah, screw it, I'm not going to play in – my bowl game because we don't have the opportunity anymore. And now I'm just going to focus on going and playing in the NFL. Yeah. I mean, there is uh, no, no real way to win this question. Here. Yeah. Let's, here let's we go. JJ. Dive in. Dive in. Dive in. Let's, let's Dive take in. a stab at it. Why Root don't for Burnley? Um, the first thing that I look at is I, as a player, like I sit there and I think, okay, if I'm a player, what am I thinking about? Like a Florida state player sitting in that locker room, went undefeated all year, won their conference, the ACC, like, It sucks for them. Like, it really does suck for a player that put everything on the line. And, yeah, your quarterback's out, but you still found a way to win. And you have no idea what's going to happen in the future, so you're going to judge us on that. Like, all all I think about is if you sat there and as a player and you were like, what more did you want us to do? You can't say anything. There is nothing more that that team could have done. So I I think it really, really sucks for those guys. I feel really bad for them. Um, As far as, like, the other teams, like – but. And I will say at the same time, like as a college football fan, like I'm, am I not excited for these four teams to match up? Yeah, like it is. I do think this is going to be a great matchup in the college football playoffs. So like I also can't act like if somebody I'm, was getting screwed. Uh, somebody yes. was absolutely getting screwed. It's yes, just a fact. I agree. And, you know, obviously Florida State, I would if I was a player on that team or my boy was playing on that mm-hmm. team, mm-hmm. I would not be happy. Sweet. But also – I think I would uh, at least try to motivate the team to be like, if you beat the back-to-back national champions who also have a gripe yep. in this entire thing, <laughs> who won 29 straight, then they win a game in a new, or lose a game in a neutral site after beating everybody mm-hmm. for how many years? It's like if you beat them, you should claim yourself a national. You champion. are a national mm-hmm. champion if you're undefeated and you beat the back a thousand percent, thousand, yes. thousand yes. percent, and I would take yes. that forever, and everybody would be like. Well, they did. They, they did yeah. beat the back-to-back well, national. And next year, though, yeah. can't come soon enough. 
with the 12 teams. Yeah, yeah. Cannot come oh, soon enough with the 12 fascinating. teams. Fascinating. Yeah. On campus, playoff games, that's going to be so yeah. sweet. I think Georgia would be hosting one this year. Yes. So, like, that would be obviously bananas down there in Athens. And you also give these dudes a chance, you know, if they make a mistake or have a bad day. It's like – Aren't we looking to give opportunity? Like, mm -hmm. one day their whole life is ruined. That's like pretty much what college – I mean, it happened to my team. It happened to me pretty much. Yeah. You know, because we had one game against Pitt that we should have won. We win that one. We're in the national championship. We win probably against both those teams that were potentially in there. So it's like now they open it to four, but it's like you have one bad day. It's held mm -hmm. against yeah. Georgia, 29 straight wins. Back to back national champions. It's nuts. They lose yeah. one game. It's like now can't defend your title. It's yeah. like that's that's that makes sense. And then Texas loses to Oklahoma after beating Alabama three months ago. But Alabama's a completely different team now than they were yeah. then. And Texas is a different team. It's yes. like mm -hmm. it, they were never going to get it right ever. No, but, no, it's impossible task. And I mean, it'd be. I would love. We should have put a camera in there. I don't know how we don't have like the footage. It would be. Oh. That would have done prime time oh, numbers. Just, mm -hmm. I would assume that everybody in there does not want no, the no, you know no, with, no. with the takes that they're having. In oh. no. uh, Patronus, uh, the CFO of Florida, which I'm not sure how many states have CFOs, uh, he said, "Yep, yeah, they need to disclose their votes, and we're going to do something about this." Mm -hmm. And I understand why the CFO would be uh, potentially about oh, it, yeah, because the amount of money. In these national championships and these college football playoffs that come to these programs, let alone the exposure and everything else that come, it's real deal. It's just like in James Madison when the yeah, attorney general yes. of Virginia was like, we're going to sue the NCAA for this. I'm like, okay, all right, well, good luck. I mean, we were talking about it on the CBS set a little bit on Sunday morning before the show started, and we were kind of just talking amongst ourselves, and they were like, who do you actually think gets in? Not who do you think deserves, not who do you, like, who do you think actually gets in? And I was like, just follow the money, man. Like, which, oh, which oh, four? So that's a whole other thing. Like, we're on ESPN now, so anything we say is obviously ESPN tells me to say. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, uh, also, ESPN owns the ACC network, okay, for like the next five years, I think. I don't know. I think it's five more years. So like you don't think they want to see an ACC? Yeah. Like, what are we vested in? Why interest? is that like the? Why is that the automatic? Like last night with Adam Silver, he wants LeBron James in the Lakers in it. You don't think he wants Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, mm -hmm. and that Phoenix Suns team in there either? It's like those things are always awesome. Oh, you're saying no? You're saying no? Change. I mean, I mean, I'm not saying those aren't big, big things, but like when you put one thing against another thing, <laughs> like it's it, one thing is going to be bigger than the other thing. Yeah, but you think they're willing to sacrifice the like the no, but I think when everything that? else is like when everything else is tight and everything is like people are like which one, which one, which one? I think the natural choice is to. You think that committee pocket. thought about that? You think the committee thought about that in there when they were talking? Because that's like athletic directors. Oh yeah, the head of the athletic director, the head of the whole thing is an ACC mm -hmm. athletic director, Boo Corgan, the man who says nothing for the entire season until after the thing <laughs> he gives full answers. But like, he's that you think that is I, that's I could, a wild thing to just assume for humans. I that. can tell you this: if he he's the head and he is the head of uh, ACC or whatever, and uh, there was already rumblings of Florida State trying to leave the ACC. Before the season, which would oh, absolutely, so that would definitely, which would yeah, absolutely yeah. crush what, his like, school, so he would want Florida State in. You remember? You, oh yeah, you're saying okay. You're not saying he held that against Florida State. But yeah, no, like what does the decision say to the ACC? It says it says you can win your conference and it doesn't matter. So now if you're no, a team in the says, ACC, you're like I gotta get out of here, man. Well, they were trying to get out of there because TV deals that were potentially happening other places as well. I mean, it was J it's J all a shit show. AJ, do you? I, a, a lot of people. I mean, the Ohio State Georgia thing has been a very big discussion as well. Obviously, neither of them made it in, but Ohio State. Ohio State being ranked lower than Georgia is also a pretty interesting wow. one. Ohio State's only losses to the number one team in the country. Uh, Georgia's losses to the number eight yeah, well, team. I, I'm not saying right or wrong, is, but let's hear your thoughts. Let's Ohio's, hear your thoughts. Ohio State. State, you guys are just worry about who you guys are buying to be quarterback next. Yeah, you guys. Oh, well, I mean, uh, yeah, no. that's everybody. It seems like no. I mean, I think honestly, Ohio State people probably feel hey, if we're not in the top four, you might as well be a hundred. Like, who cares? Exactly. It doesn't matter. That's a shame too, isn't it? Yeah. End up but as five if, in if, the country. You should put them at a hundred then. If AJ put them yeah, at a hundred, you're right. Okay. <laughs> Do it. You're right. Make them play. All right, we took care of that. Same bowl game. Yeah, make them play. Same bowl game. Nope. Still. Nope. No, no. Make them play in the Belk Bowl. Yeah, points <laughs> that. That Georgia Florida State Bowl. Beautiful. I hope they take it serious.
Be- I hope they play in it. Johnny Wilson <laughs> yeah, declared for the draft today. I don't know if he's playing or not, but that's just another reason. I don't know if he would have played in the playoffs or no, not. Cause I, you know, sure. Because if Florida State wins, there are all these people that are very, very angry. Rightfully so. Yeah, okay, it I is understand. a bummer. Even it, bomb dot. Yeah, bomb they dot. should be bummed out. Bummed out. They're kind of bummed out. We're bummed out about it for them. <laughs> You know, but the system is the, is a terrible. What system? if they'd have blown them out? What if they'd have won in a landslide in the ACC championship? That's the only way that yes. they probably would have put them in. Nothing. Correct? Yes, yes, because okay. everybody's talking about the Cardale Jones one. It was like, yeah, it was fifty nine yeah. nothing. That's that they, they kept talking about that. I, I I don't make any of these decisions, by the way. None. I don't have a vote for anything. I'm on that game day saying everybody knows why. I'm just you know I'm I'm firing off. I mean, Hershey <laughs> gave Jaden Daniels. The, the Heisman two or three weeks ago on the show. And it's yeah. like, yo, that guy has an actual vote. Like, mm-hmm. we got to listen to that. Yeah. And like, we got we got him in the bowl game, too. Not, uh, it's, uh, we play LSU in the bowl game. Yeah, you guys Tampa, stink. So. Yeah. All right. I'll be All fine. right. All right. Look at 50 right. touchdowns. Right. Stink. Who's Ohio sure. State have? Missouri? No. Uh, yeah, they do. Yeah. Missouri. In the Cotton Bowl. Oh, yeah. Because uh, Oregon's got Liberty. Yep. Yeah. That'll be a great game. Hey, last year. Basketball crazy things happen. Last year, Tulane had to play USC, and people said the same thing, and Tulane won. Whenever Mm. we played Oklahoma in the Fiesta Bowl, Stoops actually said, We think we should be playing a better team like the week before I was playing there. Don't look at me. I mean, I'm I'm not betting against that. Pat White's on the field. Pat White is playing football. Pat White, Steve Slayton. Steve was not there. No one there. No one defined. Was that was uh, you know, Noel Devine? Yeah, man, awesome. what a name! Yeah, Owen yeah. Schmidt was running wide open. Mm-hmm. Tito yeah, Gonzalez, yeah. one of our wide receivers, he ended up catching like a 65, 70 yard ball or whatever. But yeah, we beat the shit out of him. I mean, it wasn't <laughs> what are we even? It's Pat White, dude. Yeah. What, what do you think is going to happen? So I guess that can happen. You yeah. know, there's upsets that could take place. Nowadays, though, it feels like if it's not the uh, semifinals. People aren't like your best right. player. It's almost like a next year game, yeah. which is mm-hmm. wild because this Florida State thing is never going to have an answer. Because if they're not playing their best team yep. and Georgia's not playing their best team, it's like we can't even use it as a judgment of anything in this entire situation. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, it's kind of one. Of, it's kind of one of the things we were talking about earlier with the NFL with coaching with developing players. Like it does feel like that's now trickled down, obviously, to the college level with NIL with transfers. Like if you don't play your freshman year, boom, you're out. Like one of the best things that we, for my, at Wisconsin, they, they develop walk-ons, they develop guys. The offensive lineman comes in as a freshman, he bulks up, he learns the program, he gets in the strength program, he, and then he becomes a first-round draft pick. Like I feel like we are starting to lose a little bit of that development. We're starting to lose a little bit of that patience where we understand, appreciate that people need time to grow. People need coaching. People need a strength program. People need a nutrition program. We need to develop players. And I feel like at both the professional and the college ranks, we're starting to lose a little bit of that development. And for me, that's unfortunate and sad because I think there's a lot of great players that just simply need that time and development, and we're not giving it. Yeah, it's and with this NIL stuff, our dudes, you know, 18, 19-year-old guys get a million bucks. Are they going as hard, you think? I don't know. All, the, they're gonna have to be super mentally tough. That's all I'm saying. Could you imagine, dude? Could you imagine <laughs> just like rolling around campus in a Lambo? I, I, I was rolling around on like a Vespa scooter that I bought with my Pizza Hut money, and I thought I was the shit. Like if I pulled up in a you Lambo, dog, hey, oh, Pizza Hut dog, money is that what we heard? About you that. worked at Pizza Hut? Pizza Hut. Yeah, I worked at Pizza Hut. The best pizza, right? We we all agree. Did they have a salad oh, bar? Lunch buffet, I, great. Uh, yeah. No, I was a delivery driver. I was a delivery driver. So oh, I, uh, smoking weed, delivering pizza. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it was the sweetest job ever. I was like, so are you telling me I can just drive and listen to music and drop pizzas off people's house and they'll tip me? And they're like, yeah, like, this sounds great. And like, during your breaks, you can make your own pizza. So I would experiment, make my own pizzas. Oh, the so JJ Watt oh Pizza Hut. All right. So are uh, you Pizza Hut fan or just any pizza shop would have done for you? Uh, I just need a job. <laughs> just, okay. just, okay. I need a job. You don't know what you yeah, walked yeah, about. Tread, tread carefully, my friend. What's, what's going on here? What's going on here? Pizza I'm in. Still. I love this. This is this. Let's talk. Let's talk. Well, we are, you are. Yeah. You're doing a lot of yeah, talking. Yeah, you right? are. Well, You're much. doing a lot of talking right now. So, pizza, you don't like pizza? You don't like Pizza Hut? I didn't say anything about I just said I loved eating it on my breaks. Todd, right what now. did you what hear? You no, about? he said, I just needed a job. And, you know, he's, he's talking about, oh, I was driving a Vespa. Everyone knows if you work at a Pizza Hut, you probably could have bought a Lambo because everyone's buying Pizza Hut. Yep. And the amount Why of is that? Well, because it's the best pizza that you can find in the world. It doesn't matter where you go. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you're from. <laughs> pizza Hut will always deliver, no matter what. No matter what. We were just JJ in, will. Yeah, JJ will deliver yeah, to you. Yeah, no, I will. We were just in New York. <laughs> JJ, you've been there all the time. I'm sure you've grabbed... 
many slices of pizza. It's like, wow, this is delicious. But at the end, you know, when you take that last piece of crust and put it in your mouth, there's just a little voice in the back of your head just saying, like, man, Pizza Hut still shits on this. This is crazy. I, I thought this was the best pizza ever. Pizza Hut is the best pizza in the world, JJ. That's kind of what we were waiting for you to say. But you're You kind went of, the opposite direction. It, you did. You, you know, I was forced it. to work I for needed, the Hut. I needed yeah. a job. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I, I missed the bit. I missed the bit. Uh, it's not a bit. It's not a bit. Oh, now you're making oh, it even worse. It's not, it's not, not a bit. <laughs> Try not to drop an f bomb here. It's a way of life. Okay. <laughs> Their breadsticks are fire. Yeah. Duh. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 The wings. The wings. You right. the wings. Yeah. Wingy. Wings, yeah. Wing Street almost collapsed them. Yep. The, yeah. the cookie. Used to have like the yeah. the chocolate uh, the chocolate breadsticks or the cinnamon breadsticks. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 my favorite pizza. I made a I made a thin crust with the buffalo chicken. With Ooh. some ranch and some jalapenos, it was oh really spicy buffalo chicken with jalapeno. I like that. Yeah, yeah. You like, you like it hot, okay. hot, hot, hot. I like, yeah, yeah, I respect that. Uh, Pizza Hut does always deliver though. <clears throat> Maybe no even what, JJ yeah. Watt being a one deliver. Right. That'd be cool. Shout out to Pizza Hut. Yeah, but it, we talked about this yesterday. Pizza Hut does <laughs> load that up with so much grease Absolutely. and who knows what else ingredients in there that immediately upon eating it. You feel like I do. Set I know. Of shit. I know. I, I did it. That's all part of the experience, though. Right. Like when I order Pizza Hut, I'm like, God, I'm gonna. I cannot wait to eat this, and I also cannot wait to shit until my. I'm basically pooping out blood later. <laughs> like that's part of the experience. That's why I love Pizza. Hut I don't so think much. so. I don't, I don't think that's all right. I, I thought. I thought more. there might have been a Pizza Hut endorsement with the show until now. Now I. No. Uh, no. 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 This is this. <laughs> no bit. This, this is not love. a bit. No endorsement. This is not a bit. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is a reality of situation. Yeah. Yep. This has actually been a conversation on this particular program for about five years. It has been. So it's only brewing now that it's at ESPN and uh, probably getting amplified a good bit. Mm -hmm. Another fun fact too: Pizza Hut was founded in Wichita. What was that? Oh, oh, oh really? Wow. wow, that was really good. I, okay. What's what place was that again? That was Wichita. Hey, Kansas. good job. Who else is? Who guy. else uh, has some memorable stuff with that particular? Barry Sanders. How run, come? Run, Barry, run. How come? It's the greatest running back ever. Yeah, but yeah. what happened uh, yeah, with Barry Sanders? What was the story? Well, he allowed the uh, hometown paper, the Wichita Eagle, <laughs> to uh, break his retirement. <laughs> tough. It's tough. Okay. <laughs> oh. How close were you to Wichita? Right it now? was. Hey, it's, yo, it's tough. It's a battle every day. Uh, <laughs> every you can time. See the day. wheels turning. Yeah. You can see every the wheels time. turning in his head. I'll tell you what. I almost. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It has almost become. They should probably change your Wichita, name. Kansas. Yeah. Sure. To me, uh, I have to. Uh, it's not good. All right, let's move away. Let's get back to some football. Tone has a question for you, JJ. Yeah, JJ, we're gonna run a clip for you. And while you listen to this, uh, I want you to take your time, answer, you know, to the best of your ability, and, and let me know if oh, you boy. if you agree. You okay. look at. You know what Purdy's doing? Purdy is playing great football for a second year QB, regardless. I think, but the thing about it, I think his playmakers are just making better plays. Um, if you see Debo's runs, those are quick passes. Yes, he's getting it to him. But honestly, sometimes, truth to be about it or not, and I am talking crazy right now. This is part. I am talking crazy right now. And I'm and I'm talking very crazy. I truly believe I could be Tyreek Hill's quarterback. Yeah, Maybe. I could throw it up to Tyreek Hill. Dance. I could throw a screen pass to Debo. He's a great athlete. Like, I, and this might be the crazy mad inside of me, but these players are just that good. Christian McCaffrey's just that good. If I get to get the ball out to Christian McCaffrey in space, he's going to make someone miss. He's going to make a play happen for me. Of course. Same thing no. with Debo. Yep. IU, Kittle, they're a great playmaker. If you watch that game, they were able to make people's miss and obviously make big plays off of it. Small uh -huh. pass, precise passes of course. Um, kept in front of them. You look at this, this, the pass chart, right? Those, those aren't hard passes. They're good passes. <laughs> <laughs> but those players are really freaking good at what they do. They're some of the best. Uh, each player is top five uh, at their at their uh, position. Um, but they, they're just super good. Mm -hmm. Um, and 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 that's just what they do. I'm talking crazy right now. I am. I am. <laughs> I am out of pocket right now. But Micah can say whatever the hell he wants. But this is like a narrative out there, JJ. Well, I mean, yeah, to his credit, he said I'm I'm probably crazy like six times. So he did preface it 
with an acknowledgement of the craziness of what he was about to say. So touche. Um, I, I do think it is, I, I do think that Brock doesn't get enough credit. I mean, Joe Montana, Jerry Rice, like, you know, like Tom had not throughout his whole career, but he had Randy Moss. Like the quarterbacks have had great receipts. Like you can't punish a guy because he's got incredible weapons and there's zero denying he has incredible weapons. The weapons around him are unbelievable, but that doesn't take away from the fact that he's delivering, that he's orchestrating, that he's leading, that he's doing everything it takes. Um, I think it's very easy for us to sit and say, you know, anybody could do that job, but the reality is there's 32 starting quarterbacks in the National Football League, and not a lot of them are performing anywhere near that level, and then backups come in, and they don't perform near that level. But then Jake Browning has a great night, uh, which was an incredible night. He deserves credit for that. By yeah, the way. That was Jake. spectacular. Um, but I think I think Brock, like, it's not like he did this for two games. Like, it's not like he just came in, replaced somebody, and had two great games and then fell off. He has consistently shown that he is able to do this, that he's able to read the defenses, that he's able to deliver the ball, that he's able to do everything this offense needs him to do. So give the guy some credit. Like, I, it sucks when everybody just picks apart performances by a guy like the guy's playing lights out. Yeah, he makes wow. throws too that are just in a bucket. I'm very thankful for him. But the only reason why we bring it up is because the confidence that Micah has is awesome. Yeah. I hope he keeps awesome. it uh, awesome. <laughs> it is fantastic. But that is like a narrative about Brock and he but it's not by the books. Not by the books. He's currently odds on favorite to win MVP. Here we Way go. To go. Hey, Brock. Way to go, Brock. I believe he has moved to the odds on favorite, which, you know, wouldn't have happened. I feel like just a few months ago oh. in the conversation he's gimmick he's gimmick the sports books are finally giving him some credit Dak Prescott has had yeah. a phenomenal year very, very. Jalen Hurts obviously all that guy does is win and produce how will they respond mm -hmm. after what happened with Brock Purdy and the Niners Patrick Mahomes how will they yeah. respond after, after what happened with the Green Bay Packers obviously and then Lamar Jackson they've been dominant on the AFC side a lot of people say they're the most complete and consistent team on the AFC is it because Lamar Jackson and how about Tua Driving that mm -hmm. Lamborghini, that 700 horsepower offense right. to perfection while also playing. Yeah. Eric Clapton mm -hmm. on Monday Night Football. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's a great crew right now. It's a great crew of MVP candidates, and Brock Purdy's at the top fit in the sports book size. I hope the humans I all, think, all kind of help. Buy I it. think we need to go to a best quarterback award and a best player award because Tyreek Hill, the season he's putting up is – unbelievable it's like what he's doing on a week-to-week -week basis the numbers he's going to have at the end of the year like he absolutely deserves and yes we can we're probably going to give mvp to a quarterback we're probably going to give offensive player of the year to tyreek but like he deserves some sort of recognition for the season he's putting up it is mind-boggling what he does on a weekly basis but as i've always said the mvp Jeez. is 100 yeah. percent a quarterback award as it should be because the most valuable player is the guy that touches the ball every single snap and the guy that controls the whole game, and that's always going to be a quarterback. But like a guy like Tyreek deserves credit for what he's doing. It's it's incredible. I saw you give a speech on uh, uh, CBS on Sunday, I believe, about that entire topic. It was great. Very well delivered. Yeah. You know, the angle, because who won it over you the year you were the best player in football? Uh, Aaron. Oh. Aaron who? Uh, Aaron Rodgers. Oh. oh. Sure. Yeah, you're sure. – yeah. Conspiracy. Best friend of the show, conspiracy theorist Whoa! in New York yesterday. Uh, See what going at journos, going all over, going at the journos. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> Great, I mean, Hall of you, Fame. Did you for, win it any other year? No, he got four. Like he couldn't even just give up one. Yeah, like four of them. He's got four. Like, come on. Aaron Donald probably should have one too. Boom, um, that's a lot. Mm. So you had to answer that question a lot, I assume. So that's I've answered it my whole life, but I I, I stay with it to this day that I. Did you imagine uh, you have an valuable MVP player, as a defensive player? That'd be wow. sweet. Oh most goodness. valuable player is a quarterback. Like it should be. It always will be. So don't like. There's no point in even having the debate or the discussion. That's just physically how it will be. You could be the phys the best player on the planet, and you will not be more valuable to your team than a great quarterback. Touch ball or play. Every play. Guys, pissed every play. About it. Yeah, you are a little. Too. Yeah, you're. It does feel like you're a little <laughs> riled up. Is there anything? Right? No, I'm just. It's a fact. Yeah, like a we, we ended nine and seven. Like I mean, it was literally I scored offensive touchdowns, defensive touchdowns. Stats doesn't matter. We still finished nine and seven. Like you have to. Like a quarterback can is the most valuable player on the team. It's yeah. a fact. All right, and you're just saying it shouldn't. Maybe 
the award that we should be getting pumped up about is BP. Best yeah. player. Yep. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Everybody's I just I just think like I, like like a guy like Tyreek is doing an unbelievable thing. Like he does deserve some form of credit and he's going to get it in offensive player of the year, but you're saying it's just, bigger than he, that cuz this could be a defensive player that's doing mm-hmm. this. That's best yeah, player. Yeah. And it's crazy that he's not even on that list you just showed of like the top 10 on odds, you know. Yeah, he's he's, he's like not even on the list. Plus 1600, mm-hmm. I think. Hey, Tyreek, keep going. We appreciate you. Keep going. You're up, you're up for the BP on this on this show. <laughs> we love you. You're up for the BP. That's a big deal. That's how we'll Mass, That's a BD. Yeah. One of those BPs. That's right. PMBP. Big, big award. PMBP. Did oh. he win a midi? There it is. The, yeah. He yeah, did. he won, yeah, he won, he won a midi. Offensive, off offensive, uh, offensive yeah, midi. It's already We're handing out midis. Obviously, everybody bashed yeah. us for the name. It was midway season. So. What do you yeah. want? We didn't make it up. No. Just the oh, way it goes. Kind of how it Con Man has a question for you about a big one here week 14. Yeah, JJ, first of all, you know, you're, I, th- I think I speak for everyone. You're an MVP in our book. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Agreed. Yeah, just right, so you know, when you lay your head down at night, we think you're an MVP. In a WPMOY. Big uh-huh. one. Mm-hmm. Also that. Uh, wh- what do we actually need to think about, you know, with this game tomorrow night? Obviously, the gimmicks of putting up a Super Bowl, I think that should be done. Yep. Uh, I also think Rooney and Kraft both have to take a snap at running back and middle <laughs> linebacker throughout <laughs> at, at one point of the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but wh- what should we look for here? And uh, should I be nervous that the Patriots will leave Pittsburgh with zero quarterbacks because your brother's going to have 18 sacks? Ah. Uh. What's the what's the over under on this? Thirty. Game? I'm actually curious. Thirty. Wow. Wow. Yeah, unless it changed. Uh, yeah, I think we should be looking looking to see if we could hit that number because yep. uh, the way it's been going, it kind of feels like we're we're I don't know where where that's coming from. Um, but it's I mean it's Pittsburgh, it's New England, it's two massively historic franchises. Um, I, again, we talk about this all the time. You guys talked about it earlier. Like Pittsburgh's seven and five and in the fifth seed in the, in the playoffs. Like we're acting like it's some like down and out team that's like not having any chance. They're literally the five seed right now. Um, but I think that speaks to the expectation level when you have six Super Bowls. Also, on the other side of the game, the Patriots talking about possibly having Belichick move on after this year. That speaks to the level of greatness that organization aspires to and expects when you have a guy with six Super Bowl trophies and you're kind of like ushering him out the door a little bit. Like the, the, those are the levels of expectation that create the greatness. And it just seems that neither team is quite meeting what their fan bases expect right now. But I mean, if I'm watching the game Thursday night, which I will be, obviously, uh, I would say it's probably going to be pretty low scoring. You said I will be, obviously, because you're a supportive brother. You're definitely going to be watching that game. You won't fall asleep in the middle of it. Yeah, I guess you're on West Coast. You don't. Mm-hmm. No, I will not. I, I I watch very, very closely. Hey, TJ said very that closely. the NFL is against them. Did you see that? Mm-hmm. I mean, he had it, it was he had a half sack taken away in this game that I truly do not understand. Like I've I've been I've been in the NFL for twelve years and I've had I've argued sacks and I've had sacks taken away. I've had sacks given, so I know very well what the criteria is for getting a sack and for getting a half sack. And the half sack that they took away from him this week was was truly bizarre. Here's TJ Watt talking about it all. I don't know. The NFL has something going against me, so I don't want to talk any more negatively towards them. Yes. I don't know what I did, but I'll leave it at that. <laughs> it's awesome. Now, they're saying that's on Miss Holding Calls. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like there is some holding calls, but what you're saying is also the statisticians are trying to get them a little bit yeah. as well. Huh. I did not know that was the case, and I didn't know that happened. What is that process that takes place? Um, so, like, there's there's obviously the statistic, the statisticians – watching the game, they, they score the play however they want to score it, whether it's a sack or it's a half sack, you know, generally it's the first guy to hit him. And then if, if you guys hit at the same time, it's going to be a half. If one guy hits him first and clearly he's going to get him and another guy joins, then that first guy gets it. Um, in a situation like it was this Sunday, the quarterback's going down, it becomes the first player to touch him, gets the sack. It's literally how it's always been. Um, and then there used to be a review process during the week where if you had one that you wanted to – dispute you had your team turn in the play a video with a written thing saying this is why we believe the stat should be changed now they've recently changed it to there's a team in new york that does in-game changes so they'll watch the plays back any controversial plays they'll watch it back during the game change the stats in real time so i'm watching the game from the cbs studios i see tj get the sack i'm like yes that's a full sack i look at the stats it is a full sack and then a quarter later, I go back just to see how many tackles he's got, and it's changed to a half. And I'm like, what the 
Because this happened in an earlier game. He he had a half sack that he was given, and it got taken away. And, and like, when you're in a situation where you're at the top of the board and you're possibly going to be the NFL leader in it or you could set records, I mean, he got one taken away when he was going to break the record. The Baltimore Ravens oh, yeah. game in the last game of the season, he should have broken the record, and they took it away from him. So it's like, yeah, people can say stats don't matter or whatever, but you know When how, your legacy like, stats, is dependent yeah, upon it. Yeah, they, they yeah, do matter. Well, here's the play, I think. And I'm bummed out about this. Super Pretty bummed, bummed out. out. I'm super bummed out. Yeah, like that's what? that is 100 percent TJ sack. I don't understand how he, how that's they 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 gave TJ the sack first, and then they went back reviewed it, and they split it between the two. Oh, I don't oh. like it's. High Smith. Pretty clear there. Uh, hey, hey, congrats hey. to High Smith picking up a half. Good <laughs> sack, Alex. <laughs> but uh, hey, on, a- on the flip side here, that is, so this is not the first time this has happened with TJ. You're saying? No, no, it's not. So, like, that's I think that's part of the reason he's, he feels a little a little certain type of way because it's I mean, run that video well, again from this- TJ. Now that we've seen the hmm. now that we've seen the video and this has happened before. I don't know. The NFL has something going against me, so I don't want to talk any more negatively towards them. What do you mean, JJ? Or TJ? I don't know what I did, but I'll leave it at that. So he he genuinely, huh? Yeah, oh, yeah. shoot, pissed. Yeah, the NFL is actually fucking me. Yeah. In real time. <laughs> yeah. So, we all see it. So you tell me. I mean, uh, am I wrong? Like, like if, if everybody here watched that video. Like, am I wrong? Is that not... The no, fact, and I had no fact. idea that there was a full process because I always thought there was a favorable statistician for whenever things are happening or when a record is potentially about to be broke. But I would assume that that did take place for so long that the NFL had to come in mm-hmm. and step in in the name of fairness and everything. And now it's like, what if there is somebody in one particular position that feels a certain way oh, yeah. about a potential record too? You don't know the history of that person's fandom. Oh, right? yeah. Of, of every, I mean, there's so Pass many things. Rushers, that, they get pissed. Oh, like Robert Matthews used to be still talking about shit on like Thursday. I'm like, oh, he gave it to me. We sent the this in and that. And then you see High yeah. Smith, you see him. They both, they know the rules. Hey, let me get this, get this first <laughs> touch. You see guys going in. Guys just reaching in, getting the finger in to get a half. I love it, man. Yeah, I do as well. Oh, yeah. And then the rule is, uh, so like one guy could have a quarterback completely wrapped up. But if you knock the ball out, you Ooh. get the full sack. It doesn't matter. You could just tip the ball, and it, you get the full sack. So, like, there's all sorts of little things. Wow. Pat Busters care a lot. And D-Butt knows there's also a big thing where if you get a sack but a DB got, like, a, a, a uh, pass interference or a holding yeah. penalty, you don't get it. So that, But then on the flip side of that, I once got a roughing the passer penalty when we got an interception, oh. and I have never felt more bad in my life. Like I, I went and apologized. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I know how hard That's like an offensive lineman jumping off sides or yeah. uh, holding maybe call a holding call. Yeah, it's yeah. the worst. When you're on the opposite side of the run. Oh, it's the worst. It's the worst. You, you, see, it, like you have like a big yards. screen that goes like 50 yards and you turn around and you're like. <laughs> I've heard from a young <laughs> offensive lineman, not a teammate of mine, but another place, that um, there was a play that was called for one particular wide receiver <laughs> and they were saving that play for like a special time and uh, old buddy jumped off sides on said play. Mm-hmm. So didn't get the run play, mm-hmm. and wide receiver reminded uh, offensive lineman immediately upon getting into the huddle. So after the name has been announced <laughs> to the stadium of being offsides, we got five. Hey, that ball was supposed to fuck. That was a touchdown. Yeah, that was uh, me. I was supposed to score a touchdown. Right? Just want to let just. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that's a real thing. Like you're 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 legitimately mad. It's not like uh not like a, hey, it's okay. No, I'm fucking pissed off. <laughs> hey, there's a careers hat here. Yeah, and yeah. uh and things to to take place. Well, we hope they start treating TJ a little bit more fair. It's about yeah. time. I will say, uh we started our show with no sound. We ended our show on ESPN with you just talking. Uh, it was it was a home run back here in the Thunder. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It, <laughs> what happened with the sound? We just didn't have it. Yeah, there was a fatal mistake that was made, and uh, the sound has been an issue two or three days this week. Yep, that's but right. But the good news about tomorrow, it's going to be good. Be right. Perfect. Another off. That New York studio adjustment, buddy. That one was tough. That was not. There was a lot. Really? Of, there was a lot of moving pieces. A lot of firsts in that studio. <laughs> a lot of. We'll make so, an exception for your show, I guess. And then anytime that happens, it's like, oh, this never happened before. Mm-hmm. So now we gotta. Yeah, it was a lot of. It was yeah. So when you guys go into there, I'm fascinated by the logistics of this. Okay. Like, do you guys just kind of take over the set and you run it as you would, or do you do they run it as they normally run it? 
Well, you just are like guests. So your questions are good ones, you know. Mm-hmm. We still have them. We still have those questions, you know, because, <laughs> yeah. A little bit Camera of people were awesome. They yeah. were people were a little bit of both. There. They had no idea what our show was, you know, so they were experiencing That's our show for the first great. time in the studio with us while it was happening. Yep. And we just had PTZs everywhere, so we apologize for not having humans on these cameras. But, like, somebody having to sit behind that camera and watch me, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. What I... And then you guys, yeah. there's somebody that's, that's who is a very professional, <laughs> very, very accomplished camera person just sitting there and, you know, you two give a speech on whatever you wanted to give a speech sure. about. Mm-hmm. Pizza Hut, for instance, yesterday. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's just like, we felt terrible for them. You know, and then the behind the scenes stuff, like how our show is just kind of freewheeling, you know, it's not like we got the blocks. So yeah. There has to be a lot of communication between both me and back and then me to back which mm-hmm. doesn't isn't a normal thing, I don't think. And then also, like, when others talk, who can hear? I don't know if people can hear people talk on TV with the way I was being told. Exactly. For so sure. we wonder why some people say the things they say. <laughs> I think they can't hear anybody else that is on the set with them. Yeah. And they're just kind of told, like, your turn on San Francisco. It's like, <laughs> here we go. Probably. I have my entire – because there was – you know what I mean? So That's we don't crazy. Know, yeah. We don't know what's normal and what's not normal. So – but we will say – yeah. Everybody worked their asses off to try to figure it out. Absolutely. Thank you, people. I also have to say, uh, I know you've been given credit for it a hundred times, but the the Georgia Alabama pick on game day on Saturday just Thank chef's you. kiss. Thank you, I appreciate beauty. that. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Awesome. I did not know, you know, that that was all going to happen. Uh, I didn't know how filled it was. Yeah, a lot of people. Like yeah. when yeah. I started talking. And I was like, what's that coming down the track? And then they showed on the screen, mm-hmm. like, the the yeah. jib shot. And I was like, damn. And then I heard it echoing. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, whoa. Wow, there's a lot of people here. That was awesome. Yeah. I mean, that was that was some grade A level television. Good work. That's what they say about our show, good TV. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Had no sound today, and we just powered right through the heart out. Mm-hmm. And Monday. And Monday we did the same with no sound. And we also had a control room in Bristol call into our show live. Yep, yeah, that exactly. Was perfect. Yesterday. I heard that. That was awesome. Yeah. Dan in Bristol. <laughs> so we're terrible at TV, but we can check <laughs> one, two. One. They, they can't hear me. They, they should they not should. be able to hear me. No, they can't. We can, Dan. Mm-hmm. We can. <laughs> Anyways, JJ, we're very thankful for you, pal. Have oh, a great one no. out there in Vegas. What are you doing today? You uh, hitting the tables um, a little bit? Bud. No, I'm flying home right after this. I what? Just, uh, we're done. We we had a little golf outing for him yesterday. He loves golf. Uh, we had a dinner. It, it was really incredible. He's he's impacted so many lives. I mean, Gary Kubiak, Wade Phillips, Demarcus Ware. I mean, there were some massive names here uh, to support him. It was really really cool. And he's been a coach for a very long time. Finally retired. He wrestled a bear uh, his rookie year when he was on the Cincinnati Bengals. He was a first round pick, and he went to Cincinnati. And they were like, you want to make an extra 50 bucks? And he was like, yeah. Classic. And so they took him on the street corner in Cincinnati. They had a declawed bear, but a real bear. And he literally wrestled it on the street corner in Cincinnati, Ohio. Who's this? Legend. Bill Kolar, defensive line coach, legend. He played at Montana State, was an All-American Conference Player of the Year, first-round draft pick, and then he was a D-line coach. He coached me. Uh, he coached Von Miller, DeMarcus Ware, Derek Wolf. He coached a bunch of great players. Damn. All right. Shout-out, Coach Kolar. Did he pin the bear? Yeah. Yeah, who Did he won? pin the bear? No, who won? I, I know. So, and I also like I've, I've been dying for video of this my whole life. I think he has a photo of it, like a black and white photo, but no video. Um, but it was, I mean, it was a good like four foot tall bear, so it was still hmm. shorter than him. But they were like grappling, and like he actually had a, the picture that I saw. He had it behind the neck, you know, like a. It was. It was Anybody <laughs> worried about the mouth? The I know they don't have any <laughs> yeah. claws, but he had the to be mouth. muzzled, right? Like, was he muzzled? Yeah, I, I would imagine. I, I I can't say I recall at the moment. I had to. I mean, physically had to be. There's no way. They get mouth. Awesome. Yeah, because they would like to gnaw on your arm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Could you pin a four-foot-tall bear, AJ, right now? I don't think so, but honestly, the more you talked about it, like that sounds like that would be a good time. Are they still doing that anywhere? <laughs> I, I don't I don't know. For 50 Maybe a bucks? Maybe and a half foot. <laughs> I'd do it for a hundred, probably. It'd be fascinating. I mean, declawed and muzzle, Inflation. that would actually be a pretty cool thing to watch. Inflation. Can't be doing it for I better, 50. I need to talk to whoever puts the muzzle on. That thing better be tight and not come off, though, because that'd be rough middle 
If I got that thing on its back and he'll, the muzzle pops off, we're screwed. <laughs> I do like the fact that you have that thing on its back, though, in your head. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yeah, you got yeah. a bear. Three and four. a half footer. Three and a half footer. Four. Okay, all right. We got that thing smaller. <laughs> the orangutan, no way. But Hell no. No way. Yeah. yeah, you're more confident on a bear than an orangutan. Absolutely, Jage. You know that. You have to be. You Why wouldn't that. you? Chest, you, know you, you have to be. If he's declawed, I mean, you can't. If you cut a chimp's hands, feet, and head off, then yeah, I feel okay about it. <laughs> okay. That's the arm cool. length sure. of the orangutan is really what scares you. I mean, it could keep you far away with that arm length. Yeah, but also what we've learned, and video is proving from one particular zoo, mm -hmm. that orangutan oh. grabs that person's shirt. Oh yeah, Ooh, right in the. Yeah. Wait. Yep. Right in the, this area. Oh, yeah. Come here, fucker. Is yeah, and just ready? starts banging them off yeah. the cage. I, I I changed my tone a little bit after seeing that video because that was a happy oh. orangutan. They yeah. were saying, oh, yeah. let's come see the big happy orangutan. Wasn't that big either. No. Long ass arms. Yeah. Long oh, arms. yeah. Yeah. I got reach. I Good grip chance. strength. All right, JJ, you beating up the bear, yeah? <laughs> uh, I always say, like, I would, ra I would rather wrestle a bear than, like, a snake or a scorpion. I don't like little things. I, I don't like little quick mm -hmm. things. I want something big that I can see. So I, I'd like to think... With a muzzle and declawed, I could I could pin it. Well, sometimes you get the bear, and sometimes the bear. Gets you. The bear gets you. But mm -hmm. those. If you see me fighting a bear in the woods, help the bear. Okay. Nice. All right. <laughs> we appreciate you, man. You're the best. Enjoy Vegas. All right. Nice. You, JJ Water. Yay, JJ. All right. Let's get out of here. We powered right through that. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you just got to. Didn't even realize. Let them know. Would like to make a formal announcement. There's a lot of fake accounts acting like they're us these days. Really? I think I've seen numerous people tweet me that somebody's reached out to them about winning a contest oh, and something like oh, that. Oh, geez. It's not us, okay? We're only one account, and you'll know it. We apologize to anybody that gets got by these assholes, but also, in the modern world that we're in, you should triple stamp the double stamp. Absolutely. And please check. This is just a service announcement. Not even if you're from people trying to be us, but anything out there, you always have to double check, especially with the AI shit that's popping off, let alone assholes. Assholes have always been assholes, and assholes are gonna find ways to be assholes. And with the internet, there's a plethora of ways to do as such, and to catfish people and scam people is one of them. So let's keep our eyes peeled out there. And uh, we apologize for anybody that got got by somebody that was acting like us. Obviously, that is not cool, we hate that our name is being associated with a negative thing in your life. And uh, hopefully this could be an opportunity to remind people that there's there's bad shit out there. Yeah, yeah. a lot of them. Got to be smart. Absolutely smart. But some of these scammers are real smart. Yes, they're they good. are. Real good. They're, they're very good. good. No, they're they're getting real good these days. Trust nobody. You can't. Nope. Getting old people to sign up for like magazine subscriptions when they have... Full-blown dementia? Yeah, it happens. Yeah, that, that ha but remember, like, that's the old-school scam that used to be. Yeah. Like, old, now there's, like, new-school scams where they're just taking me. It's yeah. like, hate that we're even associated with it. I guess it's just a part of the whole process here, but, like, let's be smart out there, mm -hmm. okay? Let's not let these assholes win. No. Let's beat these assholes. Let's do that. Hell right. yeah. All right, hour three is on the other side. Uh, we got in the trenches. We got everything DB. Let's go. Uh, we got a lot to chat about with AJ Hawk. And there's news coming out of hockey. You know what it is? What's that? It's awesome. Oh. Be your friend. Tell a friend something nice. Take five. Bye. I had no idea what to expect whenever I came out here to Utah. Yeah, shock, 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 I can't make it. Steve Smith Sr. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Pac-12 champion, head coach of the Utah Buttes football team. Pulling in on a Harley Davidson Sportster, I do believe, Coach Kyle winning. This is up that I ain't even wish for none left over for y'all. I'm locking the fridge door at the crib, cutting hits. I read through the catalog, came to the conclusion no one's touching this. Just finished the main voyage, hopping off the main flat. Said I'm shot to kill them off, whatever the take down. I seen the boats, I'm at home. I'm selfish with the goals. I
Oh, oh. <laughs> I mean, you gotta do it. I mean, you gotta do it. I mean, I you. It is 34 degrees out here in the back to back Pac 12 champions. Mighty Utah student section has been here in abundance. They've been loud in today's a day where they showcase to the world that it's not just Mormons and soaking in Utah. No, no. <laughs> It's great football and an incredible fan base. They have been so kind, I appreciate the hell out of you all. <laughs> have you ever thought something negative about a kicker before in your entire life? Yes. All right, relax, dude. Okay. <laughs> Boston yeah. Connor was drinking right. with Dwayne Wade last night. $225,000. Let's remember this day forever, Cameron. What? You know that 29 out of the last 30 home games that happens right here at the University of Utah, the Utah Utes win. Cam Rising said yesterday, we don't lose at home, and today, they ain't losing. This place is going to be soaking in celebration this evening. You guys were absolutely What's the most beer you did in one night you think of one of those shows? Well, I never forget when we went to Japan one time. Uh, Dudley, Stacy Keebler. I mean, there were so many people out there. We, I think we went through 103 or 108. Now, between just for myself, you know, I'd always make sure to have about a 12 or 18 pack there. <laughs> and, you know, here's the thing when some people say, oh, shit, man, you got too much of that beer on, you don't even know how to drink beer. It's like, dude, fuck you. <laughs> you don't know what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to entertain 20,000 people in an arena. If I just go out there and sip it real properly, how fucking exciting is that? Uh, so when you're out there on an empty belly and you're shotgunning beers and all that shit's going in, the, the half that was going in was for me. The half that was going on was for them. Nice. But I'm telling you, Pat, when you, when you shotgun a bunch of beers like that and you're drinking about half of each beer, you got a pretty damn good buzz when you come out. <laughs> and that's a sacrifice I was willing to make. <laughs> uh, I would assume you were pretty fucked up, yeah. When did you start uh, self-cheersing? When did you start self-cheersing? Was that something you did in college? You're like, hey, hey, Steve, good for me, man. <laughs> like, when did that start? No, you know what? Uh, you know, I got to give credit to Sandman for starting out, but he was bashing him off his head, and, and I don't remember, and it wasn't because Sandman was doing it, so I don't want to say I copied him, but he was the first. So, and then my style was, because people always get us confused. I say, yeah, man, you used to bang them on your head. Oh, motherfucker, no. I was the guy that clacked them together. <laughs> it was just something we came up with. I don't even know how the, the beers got introduced to the ring, but it became a thing, and we ran with it.
Hey, why? Let's go. This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pay. Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Trenches Wednesday, December 6th, 2023. Hour three of the program starts now. Football! It's happening tomorrow. That's A.J. Hawk. The talks the table is here at Boston Carter and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer. Don. Don. Cowboys Tone Diggs is over there representing Army. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, as I said before, you know, I, I wait for the jerseys to come out. I wait for the merch to come out. And I, and I, I pick a squad aside each, each year. And uh, this year was Army. They're favored by three. Three, yeah. Going into Gillette on mm-hmm. Saturday for Army-Navy. College game day will be there. I cannot wait to be on the grinds. Uh, Friday, I'll be there live from a one-person set. Okay. Logistics, I guess, were a complete nightmare for us mm. to take the entire program, even though we planned on doing so. Not only because we respect the hell out of Army, Navy, and the military, but also to get con man back in sure. his natural environment. But logistically, allegedly, full-on nightmare, so not going to do that. Would like to have a good show. Would like to have a good program. We'll have to return to the Revolution region at some point. Yeah. And we will certainly pay our respects to Army, Navy, and all military members as the show rolls forward. Army favored by three. Do we expect this? Yeah, they... They've come on late as the as the season. Yeah, come. two different momentums. Right? Yeah, they beat Air Force. Uh, Army's kind of been up, or sorry, Navy's kind of been up and down all year. They've gone through a lot of quarterbacks. And the uh, Army, fun fact, has won five of the last seven. Uh, Ooh, Navy, fun damn, fact, right. I think they have four Yinzers on the offense. Ooh, Look out! Now we go. I think it's center, fullback. I think halfback. Well, I think now, there's four Yinzers. Now we go. On, hey, where you want them? On the That's offense, right I would middle. have to do a little bit more research, but yeah, the ones that are forward facing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Head docking, yeah. running through Yinzers. Yeah. Four of them on Navy starting offense. Uh, oh, yeah. Offense. So I'm, I'm. No offense, <laughs> and I'm a non-biased person, but from what I know about Yinzers, uh-huh. having four of them at pretty physical positions. Not that they're more tough than anybody else, but there's a chance. Yeah, they are. As you said to me earlier too. You can throw the records out for this one. That's right. Mm-hmm. Army Navy, this is what the legacy is about. Uh-huh. This is what the conversations forever are about. This is whenever you're on a base far, far, far away. That's right. And you talk back about in Gillette Stadium whenever we – yes, you remember? Oh, yeah. Do you remember? you remember? What? A lot of that happening forever. Yeah. So I'm very grateful to be a part of it this weekend. Very lucky to be there. And it feels like you think Army swag is better than Navy swag this year. I like the I, – I love the idea of the, of the Navy one. I believe it's uh, the Silent Warrior or Silent, uh, which is they're going with the submarine division, I believe. But, you know, it was just like a dark blue. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of contrast. And then I went over to the Army merch, and this was sweet. Yeah, well, let's just let's just say there's more uh, Army Navy merch. I'll be in this office pretty soon, and oh. yeah, yeah, who knows? Maybe maybe it is Navy. Maybe it maybe maybe it's Army. You know, but all we do know is both merches are yeah. so I agree. sick. We 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 here on this program support the troops. Mm-hmm. Right. Hell yeah! Well said. And, and a we, product of I believe the troops. Nine-year right. NFL vet, host of Everything DB and the Man yeah. to Man podcast. Born in Germany on a military mm-hmm. base. Stereo Shea Butler. Hey, you link to that. You've been watching so the Army-Navy uh, play this year at all? I have not. Okay. I gotta all right. Not who who do you think is going to win the game? Army. Oh, of course. That's because family ties? Got ties. Big brother, dad, uncle. Bud. I actually had my best college game in that stadium. Really? Yeah. Okay. A, lot, a lot of history in that stadium, obviously. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm going with the Army. Okay. Well, the four Yenzers on Navy. Let's remember that. Let's not forget <laughs> that. Uh, speaking right. of Yenzer, 12-year NFL vet and Super Bowl champion. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Sure, thank you. Yeah. Hosting the trenches, which we will certainly dive into. Uh, big news coming out of the shot-putting world. Yeah. Okay. Hell yeah. Did you see this, AJ? I did see this. This is awesome. So shot put is something you got to be like ridiculously explosive. Yes. Right? Because you got to be able to move a rock (laughs) that is incredibly heavy a further distance than everybody else. In doing so, you're building up momentum. Obviously, you're doing a little spinneroony. Yep. But then you got to be able to time it all up. So your timing has to be perfect. Your explosion has to be phenomenal. And your technique has to be no wasted movement. So it's really a test of a lot of things in a short burst where there's no professional. Like, you're not going to get... No. There is Olympics, though. Yeah. Hell yeah. 
The daughter of Brock Lesnar, yeah. one of the greatest athletes to ever be put on this particular earth, just broke Colorado State's shot put record. Let's go! Way to go, Maya. Way to go, Maya. Now, source says have told me that Maya is now 224 pounds of all muscle, yeah. ready to throw a rock for the United States of America when her time comes and beat the hell out of everybody else. This is the record-setting toss, Huck, and obviously she's jacked up, uh, but I'm happy to know that Maya Lesnar's exist. Yes. Okay, I'm happy to know that the United States has that and everybody else does it. Shout out to us, shout out to Maya, and shout out to Shot Pudding, showcasing some True beast. Oh, yeah. Yes. Traits, AJ. Weapon. You know what I mean? I mean, so how many gold medals is she going to win, honestly? Oh, like, that's, I haven't even, I haven't even seen that her, her winning throw yet. Like, look, look what I haven't seen shot putting in a while. My oldest brother did it for a little bit, but man, this is unbelievable what you have to do. Yeah. And you got to remember, yeah. you know, it's a, and a lot of people are wondering, hey, would you talk about this if you didn't know her father? Maybe not. <laughs> But the fact that we know her father and we know what yeah. is in her DNA, mm -hmm. yeah, we know that, uh, yeah, yeah, Maya's going to go do this. She's a junior at Colorado State. I think she has transferred. Her full source says have told me, like, her full training regimen and everything is, like, full. we're full-time. Nice. We're all the way in this. Love it. Fully committed to becoming the best that she could possibly be. She's a junior. Just broke the Colorado State record. From this program... To the Lesnar family and to Ma, congratulations. Congratulations, Ma. Congratulations, Ma. congratulations Lesners. You know, that's... Could you imagine Brock and Maya with those aliens dropping down oh. there? You know what I mean? Yeah, they go right back up. I hope she doesn't stop at shot put. Do, do the decathlon. Let's see her throw a javelin. Yeah, yeah. You think she can't throw a javelin fucking 800 yards? Probably. I would assume oh, yeah. anything. That's what I mean. Disc? You let's, know? Let's, let's win the decathlon. Anything. Why not? Just sweep... Every field event. Mm -hmm. Maya, we need you out there. Need you. Go need you, him. Maya. Go get him. Could you imagine having the last name Lesnar, too? The amount of pressure it probably is. Oh, so immediately. Because yeah. it's like the, mm -hmm. you know, I, I literally saw as the alpha male of our species. Mm -hmm. That is actually who he is. Yeah. And then his family, the, like the name, though, you know, like, oh, this is a bad motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Carries weight. And it's like Maya walks in. People would, like, I would assume, like to beat Maya. You yeah. know, just, oh, yeah. there's yep. a target on for sure. So that's not fair necessarily for her in her life. But my source says have told me that she just works her fucking ass off. So congratulations. Hope you get to enjoy it, Maya. Hell yeah. Go get the gold. It's not it's, it, this is obviously, you know, breaking a record is something you can hang your at. Medals is yeah, what we're looking exactly. to hang. Yeah. That's what we're looking to hang. You know what else we're looking to hang? What's, What's that? that? A big brain trophy for our program. Hell okay. Yeah. You know, our show gets smarter every single week. That's mm -hmm. right. When we not only get a chance to talk about all the sports line, uh, headlines every day, which is a dream, we get to get smarter. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no man smarter whenever it comes to defensive back play and defensive play than the man that's about to break down some film. The host of Everything DB, front of the program, ladies and gentlemen, Everything DB with Darius J. Butler. Yeah, yes. Go. D. Bunch. D. Bunch. Go. How's the mic? Uh, good. Sounds good. good. Uh, let's we go, got a new. Go. Oh, I just want to let you know we got a new a um, a new little satellite what? antenna. There it is. Antenna what? up here for your thing. It used to be down here behind Connor's ass. Oh. And the more uh, lunges that Connor would do, the thicker his ass would get. Yeah. Maybe the antenna wasn't able to get through as much, so we moved that son bitch up to the sky. So he should be 100% good, because what you're speaking, the people need to hear. Yeah. Need to. And what AQ's speaking, the people need to hear. Amen. But it's not just the people that need to hear it. We need to hear it. Hell yeah. Let's we got go. some good stuff today. Hell yeah. Some good shit. Let's get to it. First one, we're going to have Derek Stingley. Mm -hmm. Now, hey, Every every teammate of his, it seems, since going to LSU, when they probably had one of the probably top three most talented football rosters ever in college, they say this was the best guy on the field. Now, it's a quarters coverage. You got Stingley, you got the safety here. The way you're going to attack quarters, and Russ, if you can run it to the beginning, Russell Wilson actually checks to this play because this is the perfect play to run against quarters, is a dig and go. So you get your big-time receiver, he runs the dig, he fakes it and goes up the field, quarterback pumps it because you know with the coverage, how it's built in, the safety is built to drive that. And technically, the corner should be over the top for the double move, but offense is rarely run it. You don't see, you saw earlier in the season with Will Levis, his first uh, big game with D Hop, mm -hmm. one of his touchdowns was dig and go. 
So it looks great. They got what they wanted from the safety, but you never expect this corner to actually be because this is something you go over oh. time and time again, and you maybe maybe see it once, maybe twice during the season. So for a young corner to get back in there, didn't start off the season healthy. What do you say? Four interceptions last three games, something yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable play in this game. You can see obviously fourth quarter, so this is a big moment. This was a close game. Came down to the wire. This is a big time play from Derek Stingley on the pump and go, dig and go, and a good job from uh, Petrie too. J- Doing his responsibility. He's responsible for the dig route, for the curl route, to be underneath it, to pick it off. So he jumped it. But, I mean, just um, and look at that finish. It's a great finish. That's why the guy got drafted number three overall a few years ago out of LSU. Big time play from Sting. There are great secondaries, but like Petrie, Ward, and Stingley, they're probably, are they up there now? Good player. Stevie Nelson, them. too. Don't Stevie forget Nelson. about Stevie Nelson. He's been playing some good yeah. football for them. Been playing good football a while. Run it back for a little bit. This is something I love. I love, not, I always talk about verbal and nonverbal communication for defenses. It's more important for the nonverbal communication at home if Houston is actually, you know, put, hey, put, putting asses in JJ the said they were sold out. Okay. Of okay. course he did. So, now he posted that picture. Mm. He said, we sold out. Yeah, so yeah, not the nonverbal sure. communication here, you'll see him tap his, you know, tap his right thigh, you know, maybe just confirming the coverage. He's giving this now, and then he gives something else. He's going to tap his thigh. You see the nonverbal communication between those guys. So love to see it. Oh, Judy. Boom. What, down here at the bottom? Yeah. 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 That's the tough part because that's, that's a wheel route, that out and up. That's on that quarters defender, quarter flat defender. Did you see Russ? You got the look he wanted. Bring the tight end a little bit. Yep. Great job. I mean, there was, a, there was a place where he, but he didn't want to throw it because of this guy over you, here. You can't, you can't throw it that far over because you do have that backside safety who can overlap. The play, I mean, Jerry Judy going up that sideline running out and up on the linebacker would have been the better place to go with this ball, but Russ wants the home run in this situation. You linebackers are too slow, AJ. <laughs> That's right. Huh? I agree that out and up is a, a brutal situation for that backer to be in right there. And as I mentioned earlier, quarters coverage. Once again, quarters coverage down here. This is fourth quarter, 16 seconds left, third and goal. So you got quarters coverage and a typical adjustment in quarters coverage. What you have, can you rewind it uh, back to the beginning? Versus a bunch. That's three three receivers close together. Once this bunch, you get it on defense. The adjustment is a box. So the, you're high outside of the box as a corner. You're high inside, so you take the deep inside cut. Deep outside cut, you have the low outside cut. cut you have the low inside cut. So these four defenders over those three offensive players, that's going to be the coverage, and then you just kind of play them as they come out. So you play it here. This is Jimmy Ward here as a safety. Steven Nelson on the outside. So now the routes develop down the field. Got Judy going across. Safety drops him, leaves him with the linebacker, makes his way back out while Russ is avoiding the sack. Mm. And now he's so Russ sees him right now. He's open. He knows he has this guy who on paper is supposed to occupy that safety. Jimmy Ward does a great job letting him go, getting back to his uh, responsibility, making a big suit, a game-winning interception right here. A lot Game of trust. Feeling. A lot of trust is passing that off to the linebacker there. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean, but look where we are. We're on the nine-yard line. So you got Jerry Judy, once again, that matchup again, 53 on Judy. You only got 19 yards, and uh, you're not worried about the deep ball here. So he's in a, a, a decent, you know, position. Jimmy Ward, great eyes, great feel, getting back there, putting his foot back in the ground, and then going up and get this ball. Did Judy and uh, 85, I don't know if that's Troutman or not, do they know the play? Because off the line, they're, they're like throwing their hands up in the air as if they might not know it. Why? On that other was a little hesitation coming just off. Both of them, they put their hands up at the snap of the ball. Like, what the hell are we supposed to do here? Right here. <laughs> They're both just like uh, a little bit. A little confusion. This was uh, kind of, I don't know if they had any timeouts. I don't think they did. Yeah, I don't. So it was yeah. kind of like one of those rush situations where it's on, obviously, the quarterback to get the play out there. And then he has to commit. We saw it earlier this year when Tyler Lockett was confused mm-hmm. on that play because the quarterback gets it out and you got to relay that call. So maybe it was some confusion there. But a great job execution. You know, if, if offense don't got this shit together, hey, mm-hmm. fuck them. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh, jeez. Hey, Amen. Hey, hey, man. Big time play. Good pressure. Yeah. Three picks on yeah. Russ. Got yeah, I mean, this, this one's, you know, you're trying to make something happen, but it is third and goal. You break that sack. You know, I've never been in that position to quarterback. I throw it away. And then, hey, we get in the huddle. We call our best play, fourth and goal. Sure. We got a chance from the nine-yard line. But, you know, Russ has made plenty of those plays. Another guy who has made plenty of those plays, Patrick Mahomes. Situation, Keyshawn Nixon, slot defender, does a great job. Sky Moore in the slot. Once again, quarterback sees the look that he wants. I know what I want. Pick route. So he wants him to come pick him. 
get some traffic. If he goes underneath, you throw it over the shoulder up top for Sky Moore. If he goes over the top, you put it back shoulder. These DBs were prepared. I believe that's Ballantyne up there, 37. Keyshawn Nixon in the slot. Young player playing some snaps out there. Important snaps. Big Sunday night football game. Executed properly. Scott Moore sees that it's covered, so I don't think he thinks Patrick's going to throw him the ball. Patrick does. He beats him to the spot. Great ball skills. Big time play. Ooh. Ooh. What a great catch. catch. Yeah. Big time play. I mean, I love seeing DBs with great ball skills. Obviously, he's a returner, so he, he knows how to find the ball. He's comfortable finding the ball in the air. But great job executing this. Being on different levels when you're in man coverage, that's how you avoid pick routes. And then getting over the top and finishing the play. And once again, it's the fourth quarter, you know, 520 left on the clock. So that's a big time interception you get your offense on a plus 34 yard line. You should be able to get down there and get some points. Yeah, I got a field goal on that. Yep, yep. Let's go. That's a lot of red. Great job, Keyshawn. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, a yeah. lot of Chiefs fans. Bunch of Chiefs fans. Right there. Red. Oh. Mm-hmm. Got to travel limbo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Massive, yeah. massive game. I have to travel limbo. At what point uh, with Sky Moore do you think they're just going to kind of because this this is big because and, and AQ you've been in those offensive meetings but we, especially when you have a quarterback like this and, and Patrick Mahomes in the media I'm not sure how he is behind closed doors but in the media he always says the right thing mm-hmm. he's never going to throw anybody in the bus a coach a player but when you kind of and we saw it early in the year with I think it was Devonte Adams ran like a. No, not Devontae. Um, the other receiver, he set the pick. Somebody ran it flat, and it was a pick six yeah. because he kind of stopped. Sometimes receivers will see, like, we got some shit dialed up. Ah, oh, they got us. He's not going to throw. Oh, shit, he threw me the ball. Mm-hmm. And you see guys do it sometimes running deep. Quarterback throws it. They trust their guy. That's how you lose trust in your All right, get out of the bush, guys. They caught us. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Come on out. They got us. They got to just give up. They on got They're us. They're keeping 87 in the block on this play. Yeah, I mean, that's what happens when, you're, when, you're, when your tackles kind of stink. And... Uh, <laughs> You know, they got some good outside. Hey, Van Ness made Are you worried yeah. about it? Yeah. Van Ness made another oh, big play. Oh, yeah. That was big. Donovan Smith uh, went out early with a neck injury, I think. Oh, so yeah. Backup tackle the whole game. Yeah, I think Van Ness just bullied him. Yep. He got a sack. Yeah, yeah. a sack earlier. Dude. Gary had three sacks yeah, on Thanksgiving. So yeah. You worried about Chiefs? I should I am. I'm worried about them. You know, we know what their track record is. We know what they've done. We know their history. Um, but, the, you know, the, we're not used to seeing them lose these type of games. Um, in December. You know, this is the point where first eight weeks of the game, oh, they'll be all right, they'll be all right. But, uh, you know, it still is the Chiefs, still Patrick Mahomes, still Andy Reid, but, you know, not worried about him. I mean, I am worried about him. Sorry about that. Okay. Well, here's a team he might be worried about. Ooh, uh-oh. Hey, hey, Detroit Lions, great, great, great play design here with this motion. You got, uh, what's this, 20, it be 20, 21 little. So you got two running backs, no fullback. Tight end, two wide receivers. You got Laporta up here. But this motion, I believe this is uh, cover three with the, with the corner up here pressing on that, you know, that cut split receiver. So that's a corner pressing, cover three. So he's deep third. I believe Tyran Matthew will be the flat defender. And this motion from Jameer Gibbs kind of takes his eyes, right? He's the flat defender, and flat defenders are also responsible for those out and ups. They're responsible to be up under those seven routes. So he takes his eyes with Gibbs coming across the motion, and you got Laporta is going to find that void in the defense. And he's oh, wide ass geez. open. Boom. That's and brilliant from that's, Ben Johnson. That's, that's great. And, and the corner helped him out to that side because a lot of times when you're playing cover three, as a cornerback, if I have one receiver, a lot of times you just get up there mm-hmm. and press it. Like, all right, it's, it's, it's mostly man to man coverage anyway, unless that guy, that receiver up there, just runs it under. You just kind of zone it off. But once that top receiver runs vertical, you can kind of man it, and then once again, it'll be on that flat defender to sink back. But, I mean, Laporte, the timing of it, first down. Uh, Jared Goff leads the league in first down, play action, and completion percentage, yardage. All the, and you see a lot of these chunk plays, too. Sam Laporte, who's on pace right now to, like, break pretty much all the rookie tight end record. Yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah, and that's when the Saints were kind of coming back, too. It was kind of like we needed that one they to get play. this one going. Late, yeah. in the thir- late in the third quarter. It's brilliant, though, because as soon as he gets past him, it's no longer his responsibility. Nope. Right? And you you kind of end up with two guys, you know, kind of covering grass, honestly, with um, Double D, then the back of here. This he guy's kind of settled out. Yeah. Because you got everybody pretty much playing zone, except that corner up top, who just said, hey, I'm going to press it and man it. And that's the area that becomes vacated at deep third. Ben Johnson. 
Ben, that's a brilliant play design. Right. Right. Well, it gives motion too. Great timing Great for play. it too. Yeah. And then yeah. Laporta kind of, you know, just being patient with it too. And that, mo but I think the biggest part of his play, honestly, was the yep. Jameer Gibbs motion. It's so he's not like you said. He's playing it man because there's one wide receiver that side yep. and cover three. What, if the motion coming that way, should they should, he shouldn't have bumped out of that technique. Personally, if you rewind it to the, uh, you can go to the beginning of the wide shot. Well, there's no cover zone, D. But you've talked about it like five yards usually. Like you, hey, you. Let him throw that, and you react, and you yep. gang tackle. Don't don't jump a guy, you know, within yeah. five yards. Yeah, so that's a no cover zone. That's a rally and tackle. But honestly, and I, I've been this, oh, this situation personally, when it's a guy like Jameer Gibbs mm -hmm. or Jamal Charles or Alvin, don't Carrera, give him like, that much space. Yeah, right? yeah, you yeah. want as little space as possible. And what, as a corner, if you sorry, if you go back to the beginning, Pat, when the tight end is that close that's kind of when I would back up and just play it as a zone because I have another threat that can potentially be into my deep third. Now, when he's wide off, we call it, when he's in that off formation, typically that's not where tight ends will run deeper routes. Once again, another great job by Ben Johnson, you know, with the formation, that late motion, and then just executing and doing the play. Tough tough play, when that, especially when that corner gets up in the press. Genius. And that's 2-9, uh, that's, that's a Devo, so I'm sure it's on film that he likes to get up and get his hands on guys. It could be a New England next year. Yeah, he yeah. could be. That means you would have to move on for Bill. That'd be a big decision. Yeah, yeah. I want it. That'd be a big decision. I want it. Bill might be here, right? Some yeah. People, if we, some people yeah. are saying commanders. Obviously got a lot of money yeah. over there. Pick. I mean, I don't know. My, Michael Parsons could have made this throw. I, Michael could have <laughs> made this one. I believe on this one. <laughs> we agree. I don't. He could, probably could have called this defense better as well because no deep safety after the motion. Gee, this mean, safety rotates down. The only deep safety is on the complete opposite side of the field. Tyreek fucking Hill. Like I don't know how this happens. Third and two. That's you got Hill. one. <laughs> that's Tyreek. That's the cheater right there. You got one DB <laughs> responsible for him. He completely whiffs. This looks like when I was going over this earlier with Bruce. He's like, bro, this is like some high school shit. Ooh. Yes, it does. You fired your. You fired your DC. Whoever's calling the plays. Whoever dialing up. Like this. Oh yeah. Mean, Balls like, what in is the this? air so quick. Like what is this? Yeah, he's, he's looking because pre-snap two of C's, okay, it's no deep safety. Maybe this corner, maybe they're doing some inverted deep half. Nope. <laughs> no, and Tyreek said after the game, I mean, I appreciate you guys basically for yeah. you know, disrespecting me. But, <laughs> like, like, what is Absurd. that? Absurd. Like, 32, that he thought he was going to jump it. He thought he was going to run some of the sticks or something probably. <laughs> like, what are we doing? That's Riverboat wrong, some help baby. Over top. That's Riverboat wrong. Boy, That's God. right. Mm -hmm. He will roll the dice. Yeah, is he man. calling the plays right now? He might even, not he even might know be. who Tyreek Hill is. Could it might, it might be. Oh, right. this guy's pretty fast. <laughs> yeah. Wait, we should cover that. Why don't we have that guy on our team? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been the MVP of the fucking MVP conversation right now. Like, I mean, Flores calls a good offense now. Man, that guy's really good. Oh, shit. <laughs> we should think about who it. is that guy? And then the last one, game winner for Speaking our Speaking of a guy really good. Uh -huh. OT, so once again, the offense knowing what the defense is going to be. And a lot of times, at this point in the game is overtime. The game plan is in. We've seen what these guys are. They were already in this situation earlier in the game, so they knew they were going to get man-to-man -man coverage. So you motion over. And this is one of those uh, Peyton Manning specials. You got man-to-man -man and what beats man-to-man -man combo coverage when you're passing off routes. The worst thing for that are double in-breaking routes or double out-breaking routes. They send Pierce underneath. Michael Pittman acts, pretends like he's going outside and turns it up to like a bang eight. That corner on the outside, pass it off. Now he's outside leverage. Gartner Minshew puts it on the money. Big Michael Pittman, 11 receptions, over 100 yards. Seals the game. Big time win over divisional rival Tennessee Titans. Game win on third and goal in OT. Steikens, I mean, that's yeah. absurd. That's genius, too. Yeah, Steikens. That's knowing what, that's knowing what you're going to get on tape. Be prepared for it. Hell of a route, too, though. Watch out. I mean, from the you could Pittman gets his head right back mm -hmm. to Gardner, too. Like, yep. letting him know, hey, here we go. Big body, too. Big body, those, those you know, throws in the Sells rear. it outside. Yep. Sells like, oh, yeah, I'm going to run to the corner. And then, boom, as he turns back, his head gets right back to Gardner. Yeah. You watch. Minshew puts it on him. Yeah. Bam. Bam. Good throw. Seed. Man. Ball player. Good, Good execution ball player. right there, man. Nice patience, too. Like, look at this. Okay, here we go. Only a two-man route, too. Yeah. You know, so That's we can it. protect. You got to win. Two men, once again, a double, double, double ins or double outs. That's the toughest thing on the combo because if Pittman just goes flat, Pierce comes in, we both pass it off. We both got great leverage. But if, if uh, you know, let's say Pierce went flat and then Pittman went deep seven, now that inside guy will have the bad leverage. But great execution right there with some big receivers. Yeah, yeah. That was really good.
Thank you, D-Botch. Oh, boy, D-Botch. Thank you, D-Botch. You should get out and watch these guys play. You, you should go to SeatGeek. Thank yeah. you to today's sponsor, SeatGeek, the best ticket-buying platform on planet Earth, and uh, the moon. Plus, they gave us this beautiful ticker, obviously, which yeah, is a state-of-the-art piece of perfection. Hell yes. yeah. Uh, with over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek, including concerts, what? sports, what? festivals, what? shows, what? and more. Each ticket is rated on a 1 to 10 scale. So if you see green dots, that means this is a good, good ticket. Yeah. Okay. Good price. Good location, comparing uh, to other yeah. places around the internet, this is good. You see a low number, that means uh, this is not good. You're no, getting ripped not. off. Yeah. Slow down. That's why SeatGeek's the best, because they're looking out for you. That's right. Mm -hmm. For football season, it's ending quickly. Yes. It really is. They have a special promo. Too quick. Okay. Use code PAT, the number three and the number zero. Okay. PAT30. Mm-hmm. You get $30 off all football time. Wow. Thank you, Holiday season's coming up. Bowl season's coming up. Yep. Buy some tickets as a gift. You're alive, but are you living? Go live and experience something live with our friends at SeatGeek and get $30 off football tickets right now when you use the code PAT30. Restrictions do apply. What does that mean? It's just the ticket's probably under $30. Got it. Yeah. You're Take not going to be able to get... They're not going to pay you five bucks. No. No, no, they're not. If it's no. $25 ticket. No. They're not going to do that. But shout out to SeatGeek. We appreciate the hell out of you. Thank you, Thank you. Tickets are a great gift, too. Oh, yeah. Great, great gift. Mm -hmm. A lot of games coming up that people want to be at. Yeah, and those under 30 tickets. I think you can go to a Patriots game right now with that code for 10 bucks. Love that. Also, maybe a Steelers game tomorrow night. I looked. Probably. I looked. No, you can't. Oh. It's going to be sold out tomorrow night. Eh? Sold out. Yeah. Just like we thought. Yeah. We were going to be so bummed that if that place wasn't for sure sold out yeah. tomorrow exactly. night It'll in be, Pittsburgh. It'll be sold out. You're not going to be bummed out. Why don't you go to the game? Yeah, you should. Sure. Why don't you go to the game? In Pittsburgh? Well, yeah. I live here now. Bring Ed Bechtold. Yeah, you and Ed Bechtold, disabled Vietnam vet, guy who didn't get a chance to see a triple overtime win for the Pittsburgh Penguins because the power was out. Mm -hmm. Here's him talking to local WTAE about it. So I hear I missed three overtimes. Is that right? But News we guy? did win. That's all that matters awesome. to me. You bummed out you didn't get to see it? I'm bummed out. Yeah. I'm bummed out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'd say. The, yeah. Biggest, uh, yeah. the biggest impact. It came to his house for this? It had to. As far as I'm just need to get yeah. a little... Yeah. <laughs> Quote. Yep. Not even a power. Just the hockey game. The power could have went out after the hockey wow. game. <laughs> missing the three overtimes upset me a little bit. Uh, yeah, let's get Ed to a game, Pence. Love you, Ed. This guy Thank fucking you for missed your service, That's a whole, two games. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Three periods and three overtimes. That's two games. Get him on the bench. We need Ed. What's that? Is that Donato's? Sorry, what? Station? Yeah. yeah. What was it? Oh, yeah. What was it? Yeah. 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 How do they know to come to his house? Because he's bummed out. Because everyone knows bummed out. Ed Bechtold was telling everybody in town how bummed out he was. And exactly. he said, we got to talk to fucking Ed and see what he was so bummed out about. Good. Then he learned he's a disabled veteran. And they're yeah. like, you know what? We've been doing it right since the days of Denaro. We need to give Ed Bechtold a fucking platform. Yeah. Exactly. So and one of his said, okay. I'm bummed out about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of his neighbors called said, hey, listen, Ed's, Ed's fucking bummed out. Get over there and cheer him up, out. please. Get a quote. You know that guy that said, we're still number one around here. Yeah, exactly. All right. yeah. Just a couple of years ago after uh -huh. a fire and ashes yep. got on his front yard. Barry Pangor. Yeah, yep. and he said, if this is what you got to deal with to live in Pittsburgh, so be it. We're still number one out here. <laughs> we got another one of those. Yep. And Ed Bechtold. Awesome. You I heard the ref first time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's 15-yard penalty on defense. Another first, first time. time. We need more of this. Yes. We need more random interviews around Pittsburgh all the time. I agree. Please, God, can we make that happen? I associate with Ed more than I do Barry because Barry was a little too positive. I like being bummed out. <laughs> you know what I'm not bummed out about? <laughs> What's, What's that? that? We get an opportunity to learn about the fat boys on a football field. I love yeah. it. But they're not fat anymore. These dudes are just properly jocked. And That's big. right. Yeah. And if you call them fat too, they do get bummed out. No, they understand, I think. They're the only group of people that just get called fat. And have to be big boned mm -hmm. to do your profession, which is a shame. Because mm -hmm. a lot of them, you know, don't love eating. Sure. A lot of them don't like being considered overweight. Right. A lot of people try to lose as much weight as possible at those positions mm -hmm. as soon as they're done and they actually lose half their body. Yeah. You've seen a numerous Yonda? Yonda. Oh, man. So skinny. Russell Okun. Al oh, Banica. Coach Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. You something, want to talk about being bummed out? Something, something wait, just. Wait a minute. Oh, wait. Did you guys just see when it Who? was from? No, no, no. Don't stop it. John Kingston? Yeah. No. Yeah. 
Oh no. Yeah. Oh. When did he die? I, I saw it um, below that clip. Oh no. I believe it was this summer. Thank you for your service. It. The clip from was May or last May. Oh. Mikey and Big Bob would know. Currently doing their stuff a bus for the 20th year. Finding toys for the great kids of Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. That's Mikey and Big Bob doing that, obviously. And Tall Kathy, appreciate that. Yeah. Oh, boy. Now, Tony, They're the ones that had to break the news to the world that Ed Bechtel is no longer bummed out. What, Ty? He's <laughs> not. I mean, when I saw this video yesterday, I, I said it right away. You know, literally any conversation I was having with anyone when we were going down to that elevator, I said, bum dot, about 150 times in 15 minutes. Was planning on doing it for the next month and really just beating it in the ground and killing it. The, the expression. And you already did. And now it just doesn't seem right anymore, and I'm really bummed out. About that. Rest in peace, Ed. Miss you, Ed. Miss you. Miss you, Ed. First joke. We appreciate you, Ed. <laughs> My bum dot. I'm a little bum dot. I'm a little water eye. I know, me too. <laughs> so I hear I missed three overtimes, but we did win. That's all that matters. Yeah, yeah we did. You, bummed out you didn't get to see it? I'm yeah. bum dot. Yeah. I'm bum dot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's crying because he missed it. Thank you, Ed. Him and, Joe. Him and Joe are watching games together in heaven now. You're goddamn right they are. Mm -hmm. And we're bummed out we don't get to be there. Yeah. Yeah, right. Thanks for your contributions to society, Ed. And thank you for serving the United States military. Amen. Ed, we lost a good one at some point. We love you, Ed. Oh, yeah. right. you, Ed. At some point. We don't know when he was alive. We don't well, know when six he was months yeah. ago. Some say <laughs> we lost him in Vietnam, never came home. No. Oh, he did come home. He was home. Mentally. I'm fucking bummed out. I know. Yeah. I'm really bummed out. We know some Bechtolds. There's some Bechtolds yeah. in Plum. I don't know where Ed Bechtold's from, but the Bechtold family I know from Plum, legendary as well. Yeah. All right. Rest in peace, Ed. Yeah. Holy fuck. I don't know how we go forward from here. It's a I know. massive bummer. I'm not going to listen to anything AQ says. <laughs> Can't. I'm too fucking bummed out. I don't... <laughs> I mean, Ed would probably want us to go into the trenches, though. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Definitely. Just like he lived in the trenches. This one's for Ed. Ladies and gentlemen, for Ed. For Ed. For Ed. For Ed. For Ed. In the trenches is A.Q. Shipley. Yeah. Don't bum us out. Yeah, oh, oh, man, man. It's tough. I was already pal. bummed out after this. Tough falling at. Tough act to follow. Jeez, we got some Colts clips, though, today. Whoa, really? We got a couple ones. We're going to start with the Detroit Lions. Hey. First thing, first thing I want to talk about, because I don't really understand this. So he goes in motion. They bump. That tells me we're in zone coverage. Yep. That's what I would see, correct? Absolutely. All right. Now let's let it run. Let's let it run. We let him go across. Now we're going to send him back in motion. I don't understand why Demario Davis runs with him like we're in man coverage. Oh, what's Demario doing? Because that just got their best defensive player mm -hmm. out of the whole middle of the field. For us to run it right here. Great single right there. Great climb right there. He's got to beat one. He makes the corner miss. Oh. Oh. And he's gone. Hell yeah. Oh, Everybody and he's in gone. New Orleans. You got to get in. He's gone. Pretty bummed out. Bummed out. That's it. It's going to be tough, AQ. I'm it's going to be tough. I know. We're rolling I'm with it. I'm going to tell you, right? You're now. doing We're great. You built I appreciate AQ. it. Why did Demario? I don't understand. How did Ed die? Here too. <laughs> did we figure out how he died? He went down swinging. I know that. <laughs> I ain't went down swinging. Do you? Goddamn right. Yeah. <laughs> like at air? Because he had dementia or something? I think he oh, fought 15 on, people. On. I think he went to Cleveland and fought 15 Probably. Cleveland people. Okay. And at the end, just one final punch to the mouth. What's the thing in the papers called? Uh, with someone. Yo bits. Thank you. Picture. He wasn't in that Find submarine, him? was he? Jesus. What submarine? Submarine. I mean, the one that went to the, the Titanic, Titanic one. one? Ed, you yeah. think what? Ed's falling for some scheme to go down and see no the Titanic in a shoebox? Maybe it was one of those, you know, what do you call them you're, when you're before you die? What's those lists called? Your final bucket list. list. Bucket list. My bucket list wasn't a bucket list item. Go see the Titanic. I don't know if Ed's watching the Titanic and deciding his bucket list needs a trip in a tin Hold can on, down. Is, his name is Ed, but everyone called him Butch. Butch back told. Butch. Yep. Butch. So, when, so, so when was it? Uh, January 11, 2023. 
Oh, God. Europe, God. This, Europe. 2023 is a real fucking son of a bitch, wasn't it? Coming, what it did to Florida State. Yeah. Talk butch. <laughs> oh, he's a chief. He was a fire chief at Edgewood. Edgewood Fire Fire Company. Running I was, I was going to try and guess where a, he's from a real fire accent. Man. I was going to say. Better in the U.S. Army. Edgewood? Turtle Creek area, I was going to say. I was going to say Turtle Creek. How did he pass away? Just in his sleep? He dressed up as Santa for disabled children during the holidays. This guy's the oh, fucking greatest geez. human on earth. That's how Smokes. he died? No. Jeez. Oh. It was January. See, oh. it's guys like him, it's guys like Joe who give back to the community and who are absolute legends in the area that I love that we like to give praise and shine a light on. Yeah. How did he die, goddammit? He was a war hero. That's how he died. I mean, I'll, I'll take that, but... Did he re-enlist to go to the Ukraine or something? He's AJ. Re-enlist. <laughs> Not re-enlist, but maybe, you, you know, go be a rogue soldier. He never left, brother. He was a general in the army, right? <laughs> Is that what it says? No. Hey, Butch, rest of, you done good, Butch. Done good, Butch. One, yeah, last, done time. One last time. Done great. Yeah, from please. our guy, Butch, just so we can really... A hero's... So I hear I missed three overtimes. He did, Butch. Yeah, but we did win, that's all. That yeah, Butch. <laughs> you bummed out you didn't get to see it? I'm bummed out. I'm bummed out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the biggest, uh, the biggest impact from this storm overnight? Other than the for as far as I'm concerned, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not even a power. Just power. the hockey game. The power could have went out after the hockey game, but... Missing the three overtimes upset me a little bit. Rest in peace, Butch. Love you, Butch. Yes, you know, Butch. overtime right now, Butch. That's right. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's an overtime in the sky. That's right. Hell yeah. Looking down on great trench play mm -hmm. for the Detroit Lions. Mm -hmm. AJ, AJ, why'd Demario Davis run out of there? I don't know. They're still too busy looking at Butch's. Whatever that was, that just popped up. Was that from his funeral? That was his obituary. He died two days ago. Oh, his obituary popped up. Why did he run out, though? I don't know if we have the sideline view. I'm curious. What's outside of him? There's no one out there? No, he's running with him. Literally. There's one receiver doesn't out there. Make, yeah, no, I'm saying he didn't have like a – I'm surprised the safety or someone doesn't come down. That's what's weird. The bump yeah, safety's one up way and then bump one way and then we're matching this way. Right. Like, that's that what I'm not really sure about. You know what I like on his play? <laughs> 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 What? It's like he didn't get bummed out when the <laughs> hole was not there. You know, mm -hmm. he like kept his patience to stay out here because he could have cut back here, but then he probably gets got. Instead, he remains patient out here without getting bummed out, mm -hmm. remains confident, mm -hmm. optimistic, and him. That's because he knows the corner's trying to tackle. Boom. He knows corners don't like to tackle. And this is true. Oh. He chooses that instead of Bingo. inside safety. Bingo. It's good running. It's good Smart. running. Look at this, Detroit team. Lions on a pass one and on a run one. Oh, yeah, you know what bums me out, though? What's that? He didn't get the touchdown at the end there. I really yeah. wish Gibbs got that. Yeah. Who did they give it to? Montgomery. Montgomery. Really I thought me he out. said he doesn't want him. He did. Didn't yeah. he do that this yeah, year? He yeah, did he did that once. One time. That bums me out a little bit. Yeah, he <laughs> give back the favor. You know? not. <laughs> hey, Q, come on. I'm waiting. Here we go. Oh, I love Thank this Thank you. One. You bummed out about one. Butch. <laughs> yeah. No. I'm, I'm, I, the Detroit fact that it was a year ago, that's a problem. I love the fact that he was talking about a, what was that, the 2017 Stanley Cup Nick three overtime game against the Senators? <laughs> I love that. It was an old clip. I love it. <laughs> what, that clip wasn't yesterday? <laughs> no, it has to be no, from 2017. No. I, I think <laughs> it has to be from that clip. I think it was a Louis Domingue game. No oh, way. Oh. Louis? Yeah, I, th I think it was May 2022. 20, yep, it was. Oh. Uh, they went three overtime with Louis Domingue? Yeah, yeah, he's King standing Domingue. on King. his head. Duh. King Doming, do you? And he won. Yeah. You know, you know what a lot of people were saying. Mm -hmm. they, they were bummed out. They were. <laughs> I bummed out. They were bummed out. That's another first time. <laughs> yep. That's two times in the last three months here I know. where awesome. we've really been captivated just by a Ginzer. It's hard not to be. Not just any Ginzer though. Butch Bechtel. Thank you, Butch. Thank you, Butch. Thank you, Butch. <laughs> Love you, Butch. Hell yeah. AJ Butch would have fit right in with this show. He would have. He would have been. Butch, oh, Butch can you imagine Butch Butch, Butch in the Thunder? No, oh no, got straight in putts. Wow. Oh, he's fucking cheating. No oh, way. Holy man. smokes, man! Watch out for the green. How'd this guy die? For real. Make the putt, Butch. No way. Oh, has to go in. But AQ, you better hope this doesn't go in. Oh, oh my oh, god! Hey. The sword, you, put, you put the sword aside. Holy hell. Look at that. How's he hit the driver? 
crashes it. What are you talking good about? Question. That seat moves. <laughs> yeah, same way. You see that well, seatbelt? He locks that thing in. Yeah. And then there's a full Oh, you were swivel. asking how he at. How, how he at. He's five you. yards behind it and gases it. Well, they say water polo or horse polo. Yeah. Oh. oh. Man. I think he wanted Sorry to take it. the pit. Boom. Right there. Suck it, Vietnam. What a move. <laughs> All right. What, what did the offensive line do for the Dolphins? Yeah. Dolphins, great play here. I love this. We get a little toss play, but check the, check the eyes out here because we get the motion, which here, if you start back in the beginning, here's what I love about this because there's a lot of things going on here. See with them starting out here? This is a hard reach for the center. Super hard reach. Look, he's all the way in the plus C gap, right? Now we get this little start motion here. Let's let it run. And this bumps them back in, makes it a much easier block Whoa. for him. Gives him an angle. By the time he motions back out, they can't adjust quick enough. Still gives them the angle. Now... I see the tight end, holds him, freezes him, freezes him, allows him to get the block. We get the tackle around, allows him to get the block. The other thing, Tua typically does the pitch this way or they do the handoff from the motion toss. He goes this way and then pitches it back, which I love. Watch this. Fake here and then pitch oh, on the toss. Just an added wrinkle. Yep. Just a lot of shit they're doing. Matt McDaniel, he is a clever, clever guy. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. Hell of a down block, too, by Ingold, the fullback, on a defensive end. Keeps him inside. You always want to let them get you underneath. You never want to let them go over the top. So if you win your block mm -hmm. with them going underneath, it's huge. Dumpy, you're not bummed out about this at all, right? No, no I am. Uh, I'm saying Finns are going to the Super Bowl right now. I feel very good about Baby this. Baby Dump. You see that, AQ? I love it. They might be the best team in the AFC. There's no question about it. Just setting himself up to be bummed out. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> Because they're going to face the Niners. Mm -hmm. Oh, speaking of. Speaking of. Wait a minute. Mike McDaniel going to lose that revenge game? Butch ever make a hole in one? Yep. Yep. That was it Three right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we got Kittle out here in front. We got the center out here in front. Obviously, this is a pass play, but it's behind the line die? of scrimmage, so we count it as a run. But How did looks, Butch die? I know. Does it say that in the obituary or no? I, oh, butchuary? <laughs> I, we know how AQ is going to die. Got to rename him now. Kill himself if we keep doing this dirt in the trash. <laughs> AQ respects Butch. No, I, I roll with it. You know that. You know, he knows Butch, too. Yeah. He yeah. knows about Joe. 10 hey, Butches. Joe, yeah, he knows 10 Butches. I know a lot of Butches. This is the team that's winning the Super Bowl, you're saying? Adam. I think so. Adam. I think they're killing Adam. it. I mean, they're, they're as good. And when, when they have everybody healthy, they're the best team on the field every single week they step on it. Over Overseas? No, no, no. Once you become a war hero, you're always a war hero. So that's how yeah. he died. So that's how he died. Amen. Yep. Amen. Uh -huh. Get him. He, did, does it have any confirmed kills? 170. 120. 72. Oh, 70. oh you guys get two different sources. We got source off. Uh, uh, yep. uh, uh, source uh, off yeah. here. I'll take the higher number, though. I'm wrong. I take the higher number. Okay. Wait, hold on. Butch is in the sky. It's more than the sniper. You can see him. <laughs> hey, we do need a picture of Butch up there. Hey, Kush, Butch is right above you. How'd we get him there? Look at him. He floated Look in. Look at him. <laughs> Tickle his chin, AQ. How'd we get him there? Yeah, come on. Tickle his chin. Is he up on this TV? Little respect, AQ. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Where's the TV? <laughs> I'm gonna put my hand on my heart. So I hear I missed three overtimes, but we did win. That's all that matters to me. <laughs> you bummed out you didn't get to see it? Yeah. I'm bummed out. Yeah. I'm bummed out. It's, yeah. Here's yeah. to you, Butch. Thank you, Butch. Thank you, Butch. Rest in peace, Butch. <laughs> Hell yeah. Bill, I didn't see you in attention for fucking Bill! Butch Bechtold. Son of a bitch. Oh, Bill. Butch was a good man. He got some good picks, though. Wow. Well, Allegedly. I question that, too, you know, because... How is he not distracted by Butch's good name to take a good photo? Good exactly. point. How about that? Good Especially point. with what we know about Bill. Him and Butch would have been the oh tightest. Oh, my God. Oh. Thick Steve's. Bill killed Butch? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> did he? That means his body is near, if he did. No, no. I think he's been in a tub of battery acid for months, if that actually happened. Bill did not kill anybody. <laughs> no. Bill's a... Bill, Today. Bill's a... AJ? Jesus. Well, to, to be fair, Bill just purchased a silencer for his pistol, so we're thinking that he's doing a couple uh, rogue ops coming nah, up he soon. Went through his, he went through a uh, course to potentially... Concealed carry? Oh. Yeah, to get, uh, potentially get that done. January 9th, 1950, a legend was born. Okay? 
And then two days after he turned 73, he said, I'm about done with the earth. Mm -hmm. And he actually chose to leave. He didn't kill himself. He just said, I'm done here. Yeah. And he walked into the next life. Way to go, Butch. Thank you, Butch. Love you, Butch. So I'm done. So I'm done. I've done enough here, all right? Yep. I'm actually kind of bummed out that there's nothing more to do. And he just walked right into the next. Yep. I'm going to the next place. We'll yep. see you there, Butch, hopefully. See you, Butch. You know who Probably. we might see in the Super Bowl? <laughs> Who's that? This 49ers team. Uh -huh. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hey, hey, this looks eerily similar to that play the Steelers ran against Cleveland. A I can weeks make ago. that throw. <laughs> a little yeah. hot route. Remember that? Remember there was a hot route? I don't know if this is a hot route because these receivers all got the memo this week. <laughs> We're going to block guys. Oh. We're going to block guys here. We're going to throw it to Debo out in space. We get a block. We get a block. We get a block. And we get Debo down there for plus 15, down to the five. These are the plays that Mike is talking about right here. Right? This is the one? I think so. Just because yeah. this is one play, obviously, of like sure. 70. But in theory, he could. Connor could yes. catch that. Now, he's got to be not scared of the Philadelphia Eagles defense killing him. I'm not. Mm -hmm. So you have to comfortably call the play, get the cadence, yep. catch the snap, flip your hips, and throw without even thinking. No laces. No, you would have to, you would have to do that. Now... Maybe you're able to do that. Perhaps. Physically. Mm -hmm. Got to be careful because you, you're off target. That's a fumble. Yes, it is. Watch mm -hmm. out. Watch out. Yes. Who was that? Jennings, I think, right? Juwan. Yeah, it's Juwan Jennings. He slipped. Great effort by yeah. uh, Kittle as well. Huge effort by Kittle. Later How about on. Kittle blocking two people? I yeah. don't know if that's going to awesome. make it on any trenches or not. That was incredible. Great job. Center gets out. I mean, they just, it's just everything they do. I, I think I said this to you on Sunday. They were... I think minus six yards in the first quarter, and then they just took off because they are so good at adjusting on the fly. And then here's another play that's awesome. Let's attack the edges. We got a great defensive end. We're going to send Kittle, get him wide. Leave him for use check because they're working in cahoots. These two, if he stays wide, Kittle blocks him, and then use check goes. But he goes inside. Use check takes him. He climbs to the corner. Trent's awesome like he always is. And he doesn't get touched for 15 yards. They were talking about running left. Yeah. They were talking about running left. We need to run left, run left, run left. Well, why do you run left? Is he the best in the game? Yeah. Yeah. It's not even a question. By far, yeah. Yeah, you just watch this entire game. Watch him run off the ball. He just moves people at will at all times. You're going to see another play coming down the road here. That Look so how fast play. he is. Look yeah. how fast he gets His up to the second level. Like, that's not normal. His it's feet are normal. unbelievable. And he explodes. Like, okay, you want to be a linebacker right there, and you got Trent coming right. Look how fast he is. And he's engulfing you. He's on There's you. There's nothing you can do. Can't you even can't see do anything. That guy. Yeah. He, that guy's God. That's a professional athlete. Yes. Great reach. Yep. Great angle. Because we always, they always do a great job of creating angles too. They're always Watch working angle. back mm -hmm. to a guy because they use a fullback. Every other team that doesn't use a fullback, you have shitty angles. But because they use a fullback, now you put him on the front side guy, and now everybody can work their combo blocks backside. That's a big. You're saying these O linemen in this big. scheme. Love oh. this scheme. They love the scheme because they My can bad. always they always have no great worries. angles. No worries. So yeah, that, I would imagine if you went from this scheme to another one, wouldn't you struggle a little bit if you came into the league running this scheme if you were a blocker? Pause this right here, right? So if you if use check's not in the game and this is just a single zoned front side, this center and guard now have to work to 41. You see that? Mm -hmm. This combo now has to work here. But because of that, now we can put Trent there. Now this combo works there. This combo can now work to 31. So they get their angles. They could slow everything down, be thicker and heavier on the down guy as they work to the second level working back. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Does it fit that? Does it? You get the, they have to run through your body. If you want to get there, either take the easy way out underneath, which is always a win for the offense, or run through my body. Like, good luck. Bingo. And, and look at Kittle. You know, this yeah. guy could be your, like a diva because how good he is at catching the ball. He gets like jacked when he blocks something. Mm -hmm. Look, he's he's yes. the best. He's the best blocking tight end I've ever seen, and I'm not even kidding when I say that. He blocked two dudes on that one. He escorted uh, Debo. Yeah, Debo yeah, well, yep. into the end zone. Yeah, into the end Boom, zone. Boom, and then put his arm out and got the other and guy. No, yeah. They didn't even cry for holding. Nope. It was just like, yeah, that one guy beat both of us. Yeah, yep. yeah, that's just how it was. It was just kind of a matter of fact. Good mindset over there. I think we got another Niners play coming up. Oh, buddy. Ooh. Okay, so this, coming. this is the play I kind of want to talk about about Trent. So first, we're going to start here. Then we're going to go to the center. Then we're going to go here. Watch Trent move here. Jesus. Now look at this. Now look at him move, first of all. Bypass here. Now he's going to have a great angle on 41. Now watch him chip him, put him back on the center. Boom. 
Now the center gets him. Now watch the right guard with the cleanup. <laughs> Jeez, oh. damn. I mean, it's like poetry in motion watching these three guys just work in tandem as they work to just beat the shit out of 41 who had a rough game, by the way. Rough game. Well, yeah, it's, uh, he got blocked by three guys <laughs> yeah. on this play. I could see how he could have a rough. Boom! Oh, jeez. They come with bad intentions. So. Bad intentions. Because they're taught to run off the ball. That's the that's the beauty about when you watch them, when you watch Miami. <laughs> you, they you, run. You. They run. Yeah, they're having a good time. They're having a great time. Great time. Yeah, they're trying to hurt people. I mean, Debo just Jesus. untouched for 50. Yeah. And there's another play maybe you throw. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. Micah, maybe. Right, yeah, you sure. You can probably throw that one. Yeah, I, Micah, definitely. I, I don't know about two of them so else far. is talking. But, but if those yeah. are the only ones you could throw, they're going to sit on those. Hey, okay? he's, he's two for two for about 111 right now. Yeah. That's, 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 that, that means better than what we're going to see from nine yeah, or You're going to sit on those. Yeah, true. Number 75, Will Fries. They get him in the seventh round out of Penn State a couple years ago. They Yo. got him starting at guard here. Uh, By the way, the other guard, Quentin Nelson, is having an awesome year. He'll be back in the Pro Bowl. Okay, all pro Quentin. Type of, what do you mean? Awesome year. Back, back in the Pro Bowl. They get their center back off concussion, so they got their, their their full group, and they put together. They played awesome on Sunday, but check my guy. Look at him. He's, oh he my. sees it from the get-go. Uh, he uh -oh. sees it from the get-go. Someone's hungry. There's ribs. Yep. <laughs> this one's a good one. Mm. Boom! Oh. Now watch him finish. Mm. Ooh, that's oh, that's a mean cuss. Oh. That's what the Colts are, by the way. Welcome to AC South. Another thing we're not going to mention, because obviously we're Dying. looking at that one. Rewind this one more time. What a throw. Here's what's pretty awesome, because a lot of times you have back help whenever you pull a guard. There's always a back help in you whenever you pull a guard. They put Quentin Nelson one-on-one -on -one out here with a defensive end. That's what gets this touchdown. Mm. Look at him just eat that one-on-one -on -one block in space. It's, that's... Nice. That's a much harder block than he's making that look. I promise you. It's his old teammate, too, right? Yeah, it's Miko Autry. Yeah. And this is awesome. Bam! Bam! Come on, Will. We were friends. And and bang. Oh, what Boom. a ball. Awesome. Alec Pierce's first touchdown this season right there. Big yeah. time. boy, Alec. Way to go, Alec. Now, now we close with Quentin Nelson, I think. I think we close with Quentin Nelson. Got a great view from the backside here. He comes with bad intentions here. He wants to finish. He's playing at a high level. Gets underneath. Strain, strain, strain. Go for the swim. Barry. Oh, it's Barry. Cool. Oh, it's okay. pancake right there. That's right. Uh -huh. Little pancake. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is a little pancake. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Some things were I said about some... you yesterday. Yeah. Some things. Did you hear that? You hear what no, Tony what'd you said? say? No, not me. I'm not. I didn't say it. Who you said heard, it? You heard what Tony said, right? I what think Tony it was Tony Diggs. What did I say? Tony Diggs said, we we have AQ Shipley trying to tell us stuff that goes on, and you're much better to Jeff Saturday. Yep. That's what you said. He said, actually, he, he, does that seem like something I would say? Yeah. Uh, that's my ride every morning. That's my guy. Name, my guy picks me up. That doesn't mean anything. Yeah, name drops your segment. So. He was with Jeff Saturday yesterday. He was. He was all with you. Yeah. What? You picked him up yesterday. No. Oh, yeah, Unbelievable. Basically. He's sitting right next to him. Yeah. Yep. The lies that happen sometimes on this stage. Z, you can probably bring it up Fonte. from yesterday's show. That yeah, was an hour. Just good luck. Yeah, that's a hour. lot. It was a lot. <laughs> a Gumpy, the Splunker, would be able to find it. I'm thankful that you showcased the Colts a little bit because we got a good team. First time all year. Very good team. We got a good team. We're in it. Yep. First time all year. Hey, great work there, AQ. Good good day, nice work. Wow. Dude, you really had to battle through the elements there, and yeah. the elements were <laughs> Butch Bechtold. Yeah, it was yeah. fun. It's always fun. But we all learned at the same time that that man died, and uh, yeah, I'm tough. pretty bummed about it. Yeah, bummed out. Bummed out. Pretty bummed out. Bummed out. I was going to fire up a shot yeah, for was, Butch. For Butch. Figure. But if I missed, I yeah. would, <laughs> everyone's going to be bummed out. Bummed out. No, he's guiding it. No. Trust it. You, yeah, he, Butch is up there he, looking yeah, down. Up there. All right, well, let's see what he does with AQ then. Okay. Well, he's up on that TV right there. Butch knows. AQ uh, doesn't want to putt after. Anytime the Steelers lose. Sorry, I can't putt after, after what he did. I can't. <laughs> What, after what? <laughs> after what Butch did. Butch that guy. Yeah. After Hard, one -handed, like yeah, he loves golf. Yeah, Why don't you honor him a little bit? He's a great bit? golfer. Why don't you make some putts? Is that what well, you want? because he wasn't – I don't think Butch was putting with, you know, a slope in the middle where oh, he can't make it, you know? Oh, He's gosh. sitting on a 2,000-pound riding lawnmower. You think? A John Deere. Yes. You're saying you got it harder than Butch? Come on. Son oh, oh wow. Oh, wow. You're feeling real bad for yourself. <laughs> what do you want to do? You want to throw football? Yeah, let's throw some football. Okay. okay. For Butch? Yeah, for Butch. Butch. Well, why don't you throw a hockey puck? Hockey puck? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if we have any of those or if you should be throwing them. Hey, you look good, by the way. This is a good costume. This is oh, a good wow. costume. It you, is. You, hey, you're good there. Thanks, good shoes. Good. Good. It's a really Thank good you. fit. We still uh, losing weight or maybe uh, we gaining some now that the holidays are getting close? Not gaining. I'm right there. I've, been, I've just been leveled at. How long have you... Uh, look. Is he back? Behind you. 
Where is he back? He's From back. Butch Bechtel, a man who lived till he was 73 in two days in Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. who served the United States in the Army mm -hmm. right. during the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. Yep. Why don't you make that football All right, here we into go. that hoop over there for 20 people to win $500. And if you miss, it's not just Butch. All of us will be bummed out. Bummed out. Bummed out. Bummed out. All right, don't we lie. We don't want to be bummed out. Here we go. Hate beat. We want to be elated. Yeah. We're not bummed out. Oh, Ooh. that was a pretty good line. Good effort. Yeah. We got more opportunities. We got more opportunities. Good effort. Right. Oh, good about that one. Yeah, you should. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, buddy. Oh. You think you're just going to rapid fire it off here? I was, no I was trying to get in a rhythm. Look over your right shoulder one second. Mm -hmm. What do you see? Turtle Creek. <laughs> That's what you see? That's yep. it? I can understand. Woodland Hills. Oh, he, uh, yeah. W, purple double O, D, Y, Woody Hot. Yeah, he's got a purple harp. Home of the Taylors. Jeez. Purple harp. Well, it's on his hat. Yeah, right there. Sally McAfee. What? Maybe Butch. I don't think Butch went to Woody High, but... What was a firefighter? The Taylors, Jason and Joy. Yeah. AQ, for the good of Butch, maybe 25 people win $500. You put that football in that hole over okay. there. Come on, AQ. But if you don't, guess what? It's not just 25 people. Nope. Mm. It's thousands of people. Million. Bum dot. Bum dot. Bum dot. Bummed out. <laughs> Here we go. Big time. Don't bum people out, AQ. Oh, oh, that was the one. It was the one, just a little off. Well, I hope that, that wasn't the one. I'm bummed out. Just a little off. Foxy said he's bummed out. Foxy, it's coming, I promise. I Getting close. Everyone's pretty Hey, will you turn out. around one second yep. and just look in that, those eyes? What inspiration are you drawing from Butch right there? Grit. That's right. Mm -hmm. stick to I see, I see mm -hmm. grit. Mm -hmm. Persistence. Persistence. I see a man who is worthy of winning 25 people $500, don't you think so? I do. You put that football in that hoop right over there, and Butch's good name, 25 people, $500. Mm -hmm. All right. Wow. If you go. miss, though, yet again, yeah. it'll be compounding bum dots, mm -hmm. yeah. and nobody wants to be bummed out That's five right. straight times. That's, That's right. right. 25 people want to win. Let's go. For the, for the good man is Butch Bechtold, A.Q. Shipley from Moon Township. Oh, that's it. Ooh. Oh! Let's go. We're not bummed up. out. We're not bummed out. We're not bummed out. First one on you, boys. We're not bummed out. I'm back. Yeah. I'm back. Come on, boys. Butch, 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 butch. That was awesome. Wow. Let's go. All you got to do is repost this, say something nice to somebody, and, uh, you know, put the easiest way to pay you digitally in the same exact response. And, yeah. Just remember that Butch Beck don't live so that we could all have a good time. That's yeah. right. Thank you, Butch. Love you, Love Butch. You, Butch. Miss Thank you, Butch. Thank you, AQ. We're Miss happy you, we're not pumped out. Great work this week, D-Butt. Boys Thank in the you. back, way to battle through some adversity and get it all figured out. Because if you wouldn't have, we would all have been pretty bummed out. We'll be back tomorrow with a good one. Hey, Thursday Night Football tomorrow. Hell Let's yeah. Go. The lowest over-under <laughs> in... Since 1993, and that game's final score was 7-2. to two. 30 years. Okay. Go ahead, Tone. I it, I it came in in the group earlier. And be remiss if we didn't send more T's and P's out. Uh, Big Mike, I believe, had his appendix from maybe removed today. McCarthy. Mike, Mike McCarthy. Yeah. yeah. He's gonna coach on Sunday. Though. He had appendicitis. Yep. Yeah. He's Ooh. been in his bag with appendicitis brewing in his appendix, uh -huh. and he's back on the sideline. Is he gonna be in the same car that we saw Butch putting it? Maybe. From the Cowboys, Coach Mike McCarthy experienced abdominal pain this morning that warranted further evaluation and resulted in a diagnosis of acute appendicitis. He is slated for surgery this afternoon, expected to be released yeah. later today, and anticipates Coach on Sunday. Yeah. What? Yeah. A little dust up with my appendix. No there you go, deal. Mike. What a dog. That's In and out, Mike. literally, both me and my appendix. That's yeah. Big Mike. Shout out. At, he, I bet you Butch backed old. Exactly. And Big Mike have yeah. probably drank from the same waters before. For sure. And when you look in the eyes of Butch and Big Mike, what do you see? The Monongahela. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Also the Allegheny. Mm -hmm. Which form the Trident. Which make the three point. The point. What's the three what? river. What's the fucking what, what river, river that is? The, the Ohio River. That, there it is. The three river. Which flows into what? A tributary in the Mississippi. Hell yeah. Damn right. Hell well yeah. Said. Oh well said. Those Good were boy. the waters Into that the Butch Beck told Big Mike McCarthy were drinking from that we were very lucky to chug from as children. And the grittiness is something that you can't learn.
it just gets kind of fermented in your body. Mm-hmm. Big Mike McCarthy's a spinning image of that. Same with you, AQ. No baby, AQ. No boy, AQ. Yeah. You too, D. But much back going. Although you didn't grow up in Pittsburgh, the boys would have loved you. Yeah. yeah. Tone, you know the deal. Yeah, I do. Nick, you know the deal. Hell yeah. yeah. That's why I stole one valor from you would not be accepted anymore. I know the deal. No, you don't. <laughs> yes, I do. You don't. I know the deal. You see Butch Bechtold, and then you think to yourself, you know, I'm going to continue to yeah. perpetrate a lie that I'm from the same town as Butch Bechtold. Not a lie. Hey, good shirt today. Much better than your one yesterday. You got called out by Aaron. Yeah, <laughs> see, I, I disagree, but... Uh, this is a good shirt. You I got a moon. That, does yeah, that, not does, better does than that yesterday. say the witching hour on it? Uh, it there, there's a book, there's a map, there's a moon. Uh, Your left cat. nipple has witching eye on You don't think that's a better shirt than the one yesterday? There's a lot I, of stuff going on on that shirt. I, absolutely, but I love the three wild horses running around wild. I, I mean, sure, you can like the cats, but I'm a wild horse guy. No, I, I, it's not just the cat. It's everything else that's going on. There's some real attention to detail in that. Oh, yeah, I mean, they, they all are. I, I think that's the thing is that when it's not the entire shirt, people think that it's not as – detail oriented but then when you actually look at the shirt itself there's much more into it aaron really you know i thought he liked those wild horses no, he yeah, yeah that's i mean that's fine uh, you know I, i'm not trying to please everyone i'm just trying to wear what i want to wear hmm. amen well said butch back to will love that he would yeah. and i love butch ty final thoughts for butch on our way out of here um i'm gonna be bummed out for probably the rest of the day but i'm not gonna be bummed out because he lived a full good, a full life, a great life. Yes, he did. And if it's up to me, let's posthumously give uh, let's give Bush the Medal of Honor for what he did in Nam. I agree. All right, seems reasonable. I think so. I don't know what all the qualifications are for the Medal of Honor. He met but- them. He met them. He's got a Purple Heart. Biden can just say fuck it. No one needs to be bummed out anymore. Mm-hmm. Let's give this guy a medal of honor. And also, I hope at least at the funeral they ran that triple overtime game mm-hmm. so he could see it. Yep. One last time. I agree. Mm-hmm. Put him in the Penguins Hall of Fame. Put him a statue. Yes. Yeah. For him. Make him a statue. Yeah. All right. We'll be back tomorrow with more of this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Also, Heisman finalist, big deal. Yeah. Heisman finalist, big deal. Mm-hmm. Like, Jaden Daniels seemingly going to win that thing. Yeah. yeah. Over, it feels like. Yeah, but... Why not Penix? Undefeated team comes back. Yep. Bo Dacious, Bo Nix, like the entire year, basically, we've been trying to win mm-hmm. the Heisman with big billboards in New York City and everything like that. And then Marvin Harrison Jr., are we talking about best player? Or what do we oh, think he's yeah. in there? What is the thoughts? Who knows? Then Army Navy happening this mm-hmm. week. Bowl season kicking off. Yeah. We go. Then we got week 14 kicking off tomorrow. The NBA in season tournament. We had a commissioner on that. We did. Yeah, we awesome. did. Hey, life is good. Hell yeah. All right, we'll see you all tomorrow. Hockey will be awesome. Be a Hell friend, yeah. tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. Goodbye.